Mr. Parker, the orphan keeper, was walking around the dining room. All the kids called him Mr. Angry Bubble because when he got angry, mm. he blew out his cheeks and they looked huge and round. He got mad pretty often, especially at me. Laura Garcia, come out, you brat. I know you're here. I got out of my hiding place huh? after he finally left. Hi, I'm Laura, the brat he was looking for. <laughs> I'm 14, but I don't look a day over 10. Despite my size, I'm quite a troublemaker. Thanks to my height, I could hide in tiny places like that saucepan. Hit that like button and I'll explain what I was up to. I grew up in an orphanage and didn't know anything about my parents. However, that didn't bother me. After all, the huh? other kids at the orphanage were my family. I was sort of their leader. The teachers and the head of the orphanage couldn't stand me because I was always doing all sorts of things to help those in need and make my friends happy. For example, one day, I stole some stupid painting <laughs> from Mr. Parker's office and exchanged it for ice cream for all the kids. Come on, guys, eat it before it melts. They called me a troublemaker with a heart of gold. I was also friends with a group of traveling musicians from my homeland, Argentina. Whenever they needed a place to spend the night, I would sneak them into the orphanage. Mm. Of course, my teachers weren't happy about that. One day, I got some food from the dining hall and wanted to give it to a family I was friends with. They were good people, but rarely had enough money to buy sweets for their children. However, Mr. Parker caught me and I had to hide in a saucepan. As soon as he left, I took my backpack, climbed out the window, and headed to the Rogers. Their kids hugged me, overjoyed. It's Laura! She brought us something delicious! Help yourself, cowboy! Their mother sighed sadly and said that taking food that was meant for orphans didn't sit right with her. Don't even worry about it. Our keeper would have stolen it anyway. He's a crook. He sells the property of the orphanage to buy himself expensive clothes and dumb paintings. Mrs. Rogers made some awesome pasta for everyone. Mmm, yummy! If you open a diner, you'd be millionaires! Thank you, Laura. You have a heart of gold. When I came back to the orphanage, I was scolded once again. I was used to it, but the other kids that covered for me got punished as well. That made my blood boil. So I composed a cheeky song about Mr. Parker to get back at him and sang it on camera. By the way, I had a beautiful voice. What do you think? The angry bubble orphan keeper, I've never met anyone cheaper. He's mean and vile and did us wrong. If you agree, then sing along. My friends and I uploaded that video to YouTube and it blew up. Everyone started talking about our orphanage and turned on Mr. Parker. <gasps> he hushed up the scandal, but only just. Meanwhile, I was in for a world of trouble. Ever since then, the grown-ups did everything to make my life unbearable. They punished me every day, made me wash the other kids' dishes, and cleaned up after everyone. I quickly got tired of it and realized I wasn't going to get off easy this time. So I decided to run away. But you have nowhere to go. I'd rather live on the street with wandering musicians than put up with this any longer. I was saying goodbye to my friends when someone burst into the room, surrounded by bodyguards. Wow, it was a popular singer, Samantha. Where is she? Where is that little miracle? Then she saw me and threw her arms around me. Careful, you're covered in glitter. Were you looking for me? It turned out that she had seen hmm. my viral video and liked the way I looked and sang. That's why that diva wow. decided to adopt me. Your life's about to change, baby. All my friends were jealous of me. The teachers cried tears Whoa. of joy when they found out I was leaving. I wasn't sure Samantha was fit to be a parent, but agreed to be adopted by her to get out of the orphanage. I moved into a luxurious mansion. It was so huge that I had to move around it on a scooter. Living there was fun. I had my own room and there were enough snacks to fill the pool. What I didn't like though, was that my new mom bought us identical clothes. Ugh, I hated rhinestones and dresses. You look wonderful. It's like we're sisters. We really did look a lot alike. Our hair, eyes, smiles. However, that's where the similarities ended. Samantha turned out to be incredibly arrogant. She turned the lives of the maids into a living hell and went ballistic at the slightest provocation. I asked for water with two ice cubes. Why aren't there three of them in my glass then, huh? Bring me a new one. Yeah, the wealth and fame clearly went to her head. Samantha treated me like a lapdog. She dragged me to parties, photo shoots, and interviews and bragged about me like I was an expensive gadget. People kept pinching my cheeks and saying how similar we looked. Laura is the cutest. Easy lady, I'm not a plush toy. Laura, mind your tongue. You are no longer an orphan in rags. Don't forget about your new status. 
All she cared about was her freaking status. I didn't want to be a part of her glamorous world, but I didn't have much choice. One day, my adoptive mom dragged me to a recording studio and introduced me to her producer, Max. I impressed him too. Samantha, mm-hmm. the adoption was a great idea. Your ratings have skyrocketed thanks to the kid. Try not to get into trouble again though. It turned out she was constantly embroiled in all sorts of scandals. She disrupted concerts, shouted at the paparazzi, and asked for crazy fees. Her career suffered from it all, but Samantha didn't care. Despite it all, my new life had its advantages. For example, I now had more opportunities to help my friends. I brought my mom's old clothes wow. to the orphanage. Jewelry and money were scattered all around the mansion. Hmm. Samantha wasn't keeping watch over them, so I gave uh-huh. them to the Rogers and my musician <laughs> friends. One day, Samantha went too far. Max brought us to a music award ceremony, but she refused uh-huh. to get out of the limo until the carpet was covered in gold sequins. Samantha, you're ruining your career. You are losing popularity as it is. This isn't the time to throw a tantrum. Your fans are waiting. She pouted and started to whine. I don't care about my fans. I'm a star. They will wait for me in the rain all night if I want them to. Oops. Unfortunately for her, at that moment, the limo door was opened by the driver and her fans heard her words. They didn't like the way Samantha spoke about them and she was booed. The next day, she left for yet another photo shoot and I stayed in the mansion. I didn't like being alone among all that luxury, so I decided to throw a party for my friends. I invited the kids from the orphanage, the musicians, and Mrs. Rogers with her children over. We ate pizzas and watched a movie. Everyone was having fun, and then Mrs. Rogers handed me a sweater that she had knitted herself. Let it warm your brave heart. You have no idea how much you helped us. She told me she'd used the jewelry I'd given her to open a small but cozy diner. Now, there was a chance they'd escape from poverty. Everyone hugged me and thanked me for the evening. I was so happy that I almost burst into tears. But then, the evil queen returned to her castle. Oops. What is this trash doing in my mansion? Samantha screeched like she had been bitten by wild bees. I tried to tell her that everything was fine. I just felt sad and called some friends over. I'll have to spray the house with pesticides now. I forbid you from talking to them again. Samantha stomped her foot and ordered the guards to throw my guests out. And then she snatched the sweater out of my hands and told me to flush it down the toilet. What had gotten into her? It pissed me off and we had our first serious fight. You're insufferable. Being a star doesn't give you the right to treat people like that. I've never met anyone as ungrateful as you. I gave you everything, but you're still keeping company with those beggars in rags. I was furious with her and ran to my room, but not before knocking all her awards off the shelf. I didn't know what to do. I didn't want to go back to the orphanage, but I couldn't put up with any more of Samantha's antics either. It wasn't in my nature. So I decided to go back to my original plan, to run away and become a street musician. I was throwing things into my backpack when I suddenly heard Samantha crying in the hallway. At first, it made me smile. What, did the drama queen break a nail or something? But soon, she started to sob louder. I couldn't stand it any longer and decided to find out what happened. As I left the room, I saw Samantha sitting on the floor and scrolling through her phone in tears. It turned out that her behavior at that music award caused a real scandal. Her fans were enraged by the behavior of their idol and boycotted her. Samantha's concerts were canceled and she lost contracts with her sponsors. Well, that was just karma. Oh, Laura, I'm sorry I was so (sighs) harsh. I'm so upset. Max said he was tired of my behavior and wouldn't work with me anymore. I'm so miserable. Of course, she had it coming. But for some reason, I felt sorry for her. I decided to stay with her while she was going through such a rough time. Well, you know me. I was always trying to help everyone. Samantha had to fire all the staff since she wasn't earning any money. It turned out she was completely helpless. She couldn't even make coffee or her bed without my help. I had to teach her everything. I don't get it. I tried to make scrambled eggs, but it doesn't look right. Oh, you should have broken the eggs before putting them on the frying pan. Why is everything so complicated? She was more helpless than a baby. Samantha sold her designer clothes and jewelry to pay the bills. However, we soon ran out of money anyway. Her career kept going down at the speed of an avalanche. Her haters did not let up, and soon enough, there was no trace of Samantha's fame or fortune left. But the worst thing was that we soon lost our home and ended up on the street. See that puddle? Do you think it rained here? Nope, those are Samantha's tears. She wasn't handling the changes well. I've lost everything. What are we supposed to do now? First of all, quit crying before I go deaf. Cheer up, there's always hope. She calmed down and said she had an idea. And then she dragged me to the house of her former maid and demanded she let us stay at her place. 
Uh-huh. Of course, the woman was stunned by Samantha's nerve and told us to go away. My adoptive mom was genuinely confused. Seriously? When was the last time you were kind to anyone? Why would they help you? It soon got dark. We still had nowhere to spend the night. I called my friends from the orphanage, and they agreed to distract the guard so that Samantha and I could sneak inside. We settled down on an air mattress in the common room, and my friends brought us some food. At first, the former star kept whining. I want a suite with a jacuzzi and a salmon steak. But then, she saw the terrible conditions the children lived in. The Ice Queen realized they shared the little they had with us, and her heart melted. Guys, I'm sorry I called you trash. You are angels. That night, neither of us could fall asleep and had a heart-to-heart for the first time. Samantha said that she grew up in poverty. As soon as she achieved success, the money went to her head. I'm so ashamed of the way I acted. How could I be so arrogant and mean? Then she asked me why the conditions at the orphanage were so bad. I told her that its keeper was a crook, and everyone knew that he was stealing the money allocated to the kids he was supposed to take care of for. What a dung beetle. He should be in prison. We chatted until dawn and fell asleep hugging each other. Samantha was pretty cute now that she wasn't acting like a diva. The next morning, we decided that she needed to find a job. Luckily, I knew that Mrs. Rogers was looking for a dishwasher. She hired Samantha on the spot and let us stay over for a while. Whenever I had free time, I performed on the street with my musician friends. Some of the passerbys gave us change. Soon, Samantha and I managed to save up some money and rent a small apartment. All our friends were invited to the housewarming party. My adoptive (laughs) mom even baked a pie. Um, to be honest, it looked like a boulder. But she tried really hard. I'm sorry I was so rude to you. You are all wonderful people. Laura, you're a lifesaver. I love you. I love you too. Mom? She looked really touched as she hugged me. Having lost all our wealth, we gained something more valuable. A real family. Now, we lived modestly, but we're happy. I loved singing and seemed to be pretty great at it. More and more passerby stopped to listen to me. And one day, I saw a familiar face in the crowd. It was Max, Mom's former producer. He recognized me too. Laura, I didn't know you could sing. I'm glad to see you. How is Samantha? I told him about everything we had to go through after Mom had lost her fame and proudly said that she had changed and was no longer arrogant. Max was glad that the two of us became a real family. To my surprise, he invited me to his studio. You could become a real star. I could help you succeed. It would have been foolish to turn down such an offer. Of course I agreed. Soon, I recorded my first album with my musician friends. It became a hit and brought us fame. I got fans and became rich. Samantha and I bought a nice house. However, fame didn't go to my head. I stayed humble and kept helping my friends. One day, I asked my mom if she wanted to perform again, but she said no. I've been thinking about it, and I want to do something that really matters now. It turned out that she had been gathering documents and signatures to get Mr. Parker fired. Thanks to her, Mr. Angry Bubbles was going to prison. My mom became the new head of the orphanage. I was so proud of her. She had done a lot for those kids, and they loved her. We switched places. Now, I was a star, and my mom was doing charity work. But what mattered was, we got along. On weekends, we all came to Mrs. Rogers' diner. Help yourself to the pasta. Samantha said she also brought something delicious and put a plate of charred pizza on the table. Yeah, mom's cooking hadn't got any better. (laughs) I loved her anyway. Hi, I'm Zoe, and this pier is where I like to come to be alone, dream, or write down secrets in my personal diary. My dad is a fisherman. We lived on a beautiful island. Clean air, friendly neighbors, and beautiful nature. It was a paradise. I also had a secret that only my diary knew about. I wanted to become a doctor, but to do that, I would have to move to the city. I didn't want to upset dad and leave him alone. I'd always helped him, ever since I was a kid. (sighs) That's why I didn't say anything to my father and only wrote about my dreams in my diary. One day, dad was fishing on a boat, and I was waiting for him on the pier. All of a sudden, a strong wind carried my diary away and it fell into the water. Oh no! Dad fished it out using an oar, and we spent the whole evening drawing the pages by the fireplace. In the morning, my father surprised me with some unexpected news. He'd been offered an excellent job on a fishing boat. The pay is good, but my voyage will last several months. I asked my sister from Los Angeles to let you stay with her while I'm away. You don't mind, do you? Did I hear that right? Did he really just say Los Angeles? The city of dreams? Of course I didn't mind. I could start taking courses and preparing for the entrance exams to a medical college there. Yay! (laughs) It was friggin' amazing. Soon, Dad and our neighbor, Miss Kay, drove me to the airport, and I set out to try my luck in the big city. Good luck, sweetie. I was worried because I'd never left the island before. 
I had also never met Dad's hmm. sister or her twin daughters, Mary and Ashley. I'm sure we'll be fast friends. My legs were shaking when I got off the plane. People were rushing back and forth quickly, bumping into each other. A cute but sad looking guy came up to me. He said he'd lost his wallet and hadn't eaten in several days. My heart sank. I felt sorry for him, so I gave him a few dollars and a piece of the apple pie I'd cooked. Thank you, I will never forget your kindness. I smiled at him warmly because I loved helping people. However, after he'd run away, I heard someone behind me snicker. Wow, <laughs> what a moron. Right? I thought everyone that naive was extinct like dinosaurs. <laughs> what was going on? I turned around and I saw my aunt and her daughters. They looked <laughs> arrogant as they sneered at me. What are you laughing at? Oh, dear niece, you're no longer on your dumb island, but now in a metropolis. You can't afford to be nice here. My aunt said that hungry guy had lied to me. He wandered around the city and begged people for money all day. That bastard! I could hardly believe there were people who did that. Then they brought me to my aunt and cousin's penthouse. Wow, I'd only ever seen such beautiful places in movies before. They even had maids. Well, we're stars after all. We are supposed to live in luxury. What? Stars? I looked around and realized the walls were covered with pictures of the twins. In huh? some of them, they were standing next to celebrities. I could also see a commercial with them playing on TV. Wow, I was really impressed, and my cousins looked pleased with themselves. It's a great honor for you to be staying with us. But if anyone asks, tell them you're our maid. We don't want anyone to know we have a cousin that looks like this. Um, were they talking about my figure? Then they haughtily clapped their hands and we were served lunch. My aunt and cousin started to eat sloppily, but I lost my appetite. There was only junk food and sweets on the table. Oh, I've got an idea. Let's go to the farmer's market. I can kick us a healthy dinner. However, they just laughed at me again. They giggled and told me not to act like a country girl. Besides, we get this food for free. My aunt told me that when Mary and Ashley were little kids, they were noticed by a producer who offered them roles in a sitcom. After that, they started a fast food commercial and they got a lot of money for it. When they were done with the food, they threw their wrappers on the floor and made the maids clean up after them. I felt so terrible that I decided to help them. My cousins laughed and said they would teach me to enjoy life, and they invited me to a party. To be honest, I didn't like them, but I really had no choice, and I agreed to come. We arrived at a fancy place. Mary and Ashley immediately became the center of attention. My cousins had a lot of friends and handsome, ripped boyfriends. I couldn't understand why everyone liked and praised them. Mary and Ashley were narcissistic, spoiled, and mean. I said that I had a headache because of the loud music, and I asked them to call me a taxi. As I was leaving, I heard them and their friends start trash-talking me. <sighs> Could they be any faker? I was used to getting up early, so while everyone else was still snoring, I decided to sign up for the courses that I was interested in. <laughs> the city turned out to be so big that I got lost several times on the way. When I finally got there, I was quite surprised. The guy that had fooled me at the airport huh? was signing up for the same courses as me. Can you imagine? He looked at me with interest and even tried to hit on me. Hello, beautiful stranger. Can I buy you a caramel cappuccino? Stranger? I'd had it with him. Had he forgotten that he'd begged me for money just the day before? He must have deceived so many people he couldn't even remember their faces anymore. Ugh, back off. I don't want to have anything to do with a con man like you. I left him gaping after me and came up to the administrator. That's when I found out some unpleasant news. The courses cost more than I was expecting. Dad and I didn't have that kind of money. It seemed I would have to wave goodbye to my dream. I came home feeling miserable. I thought the day just couldn't get any worse, but then my cousin said I had to earn my keep. I just shrugged because I was used to helping around the house. But my vile cousins still seem unhappy and they deliberately made a mess wherever I cleaned up. You should respect other people's work. You should just work harder. Look, you missed a spot here. Ugh, I definitely would have taught them a lesson if I was any less kind. I really didn't like living there, but dad was on a voyage and I had no other choice. I wished there was a way I could talk with him. The next morning, Mary and Ashley seemed upset about something. It turned out that my aunt's back had started hurting, and she had left to go to a hospital. We went to visit her, and we heard a weird conversation. The doctor was explaining to my aunt that her insurance didn't cover the treatment she needed, and she would have to go to a free hospital. I was huh? stunned, and the twins looked just as shocked. Mom, what is he talking about? We're rich as hell! 
Sorry, girls, but it's time you found out the truth. Wow, my mind was in chaos after listening to her story. It turned out that after the twins starred in the sitcom and blew up, their fame got to their mom's head. She grew greedy and demanded huge fees for her daughter's work. So the cousins stopped getting job offers. Soon, everyone forgot about them, and my hmm. aunt only managed to get them small roles in dumb commercials. But even those hadn't been bringing in much money for a while. They had been living beyond their means and got into huge debts. So now, in order to pay for her treatment, they would have to sell a lot of their stuff. No, I don't want to live like some beggar. Quit whining. Your mom's health is more important. <sighs> this is my fault. I spoiled my daughters and was too greedy. Zoe, please look after them while I'm in the hospital. What? That was the last thing I needed. I had better things to do than look after those witches, but I promised I would think about it. When my cousins and I came back home, we saw people carrying out all the expensive furniture and appliances. We had nothing to pay the maids, so they left. Ashley and Mary were bubbling with anger. They started calling their friends and their handsome boyfriends, and you can probably guess what happened. No one wanted anything to do with them after they'd lost their money and fame. The twins' friends had turned out to be even faker than them, so the girls had kind of gotten what they deserved. Deep inside, I was gloating. <laughs> it was karma. I locked myself in my room and started reading a textbook and preparing for the exams. But then I heard someone start crying in the corridor. I peeked out carefully and I saw Ashley holding her torn clothes and whimpering. This is my favorite t-shirt. I've never even held a needle. Mary was standing nearby and holding her rumbling stomach. I'm so hungry. I don't recognize any of the products in our refrigerator. We're so pathetic. We don't know how to do anything. Oh, I kind of felt sorry for the poor things. They looked like helpless mm. children that couldn't take care of themselves. Even though my cousins had mocked me for my kindness, I decided I would help them. I found some groceries and prepared a hearty and healthy dinner for us. This is a thousand times better than the chips. Zoe, you're a miracle worker. Then I sewed up the holes in Ashley's t-shirt, helped the girls do their homework, and cleaned up the penthouse after they fell asleep. <sighs> oh, I was exhausted. Despite that, though, I couldn't fall asleep for a long time and just kept thinking about my aunt's words. I was in a metropolis now, so I had to be bolder. I felt responsible for my dumb cousins. So I just started to become their agent and get good roles for them so they could start paying off their debts. In the morning, I took the twins' resumes and I went to a production center. I wanted to seem like an experienced agent of successful actresses, so I spoke firmly and sang praises of the girls. Unfortunately, the producers said that they didn't have any roles for Mary and Ashley. Damn my luck. Zoe, we're actually looking for someone more sophisticated for a commercial of teenage cosmetics. Someone like... Hmm, you! The woman told me I should try my luck at the auditions. Oh, I read the script and found out I would just need to pose against the backdrop of a beautiful nature. Oh, I like that. And the producers liked how natural I looked. And it was little wonder. After all, I grew up on an island. I got the job. I was a little worried about Mary and Ashley's reaction to the news. After all, I did promise to find jobs for them. However, I agreed to star in the commercial because we needed the money, and I also had to save up for college. I tried to explain that to my cousins. They looked upset, but didn't throw a fit. Thank you, Zoe. You've done so much for us. You deserve this chance. Don't worry about us. Wow, had they finally grown up a bit? I started acting in commercials and quickly became popular. I guess I had a knack for it. People recognized me on the street and asked me for autographs. <laughs> Yay! However, the twins missed being famous and were in low spirits. I didn't want fame to go to my head, so I used the money I earned to buy them gifts and pay my aunt's hospital bills. When I had free time, I prepared for the exams and took care of my cousins. Things were going well, but then one day, I came home earlier than usual and accidentally overheard what Ashley and Mary really thought of me. <laughs> Zoe is so naive. All we had to do was look pathetic, and now she's working for us. It's all because we're great actresses, and she's just still a dumb country girl. Excuse me? Those filthy liars! It made my blood boil. I told them everything I thought of them. You are just jealous and helpless meanies. You're like parasites that only know how to use other people. This is why you'll never get serious roles. I've had it with you. The girls clearly weren't expecting me to stand up for myself. They froze in surprise. I rented an apartment that same day and moved out. I kept acting in commercials, preparing for the exams and waiting for my dad to come back from his voyage. 
One evening, our neighbor from the island, Mrs. K, called me and said she'd seen me on TV. You're a real star. Your father is so proud of you. Wait, when did you talk to my dad? Isn't he at sea? Mrs. K was very surprised and said that my dad had never left. He lived in our house like usual and they saw each other every day. I couldn't believe it. Had my father lied to me? But why? And then it hit me. He just wanted to get rid of me. That's why he sent me away to my aunt and her terrible daughters. He wanted to get rid of the burden and enjoy his life. <sighs> I was shaking with anger. I couldn't believe that he was a liar too. I texted him that I knew the truth and I swore to myself I wouldn't be kind to anyone else ever again. My aunt was right after all. You had to be selfish to survive in the big city. When the courses began, I was sure that I would meet that guy again, but for some reason he didn't come. And one evening I saw him in a park. He was reading a book to a woman in a wheelchair. Our eyes met. I thought about the time he had deceived me and walked on angrily, but he caught up to me. Wait, I once asked you for a couple of dollars. Here, let me pay you back. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have asked you for money. Hmm, his name was Bobby. He said that the woman in the wheelchair was his mother. She was very ill and he wanted to become a doctor to help her. However, the tuition was too expensive, so he started conning people. But soon, he'd felt ashamed of himself. Now, Bobby had a normal job and was trying to return the money to those people he'd conned. I actually recognized you back then, because I couldn't stop thinking about you after the airport. That pie you gave me was delicious. You're very kind. Don't stop being good because of bad people. Wow, his words touched my heart. Then Bobby said he would save up enough money for college by the next year and asked me out for coffee. I walked home in a daze. There was another surprise for me waiting there. Dad and Mrs. K had come over. I didn't want to talk to my dad, but he quickly explained everything. Sweetie, remember the day we dried your diary? I'm sorry, but I accidentally read about how much you wanted to become a doctor and how afraid you were that I would be upset if you left. I told you that I was going away so you would move to the city without feeling guilty for following your dreams. I didn't want to stand in your way. Tears stung my eyes. Dad, how could you say that? You're a beacon for me and not a problem. I was over the moon because we'd cleared everything up. Bobby was right. I couldn't lose faith in everything good in life just because of a few bad people. I got into medical college and I kept acting in commercials. Bobby turned out to be a wonderful guy who was just in a difficult situation. I'm glad he didn't go down a slippery slope. We often talk. Dad lives on the island and I visit him during holidays. Do you know what happened to my cousins? When my aunt was discharged from the hospital, she realized she hadn't raised them properly. So she asked my dad to take them in for a while so they would learn to work and take care of themselves. <laughs> oh, you should have seen that. They deserved an Oscar. <laughs> oh no, I'm so fragile, I can't work. My head is spinning, I'm gonna faint from hunger. However, no one believed those actresses anymore. <laughs> I was exhausted and struggling to stay awake, but I couldn't go to bed until I'd finished my biology <gasps> report. It was too important to me. I put a bar of chocolate on my desk and I promised to reward myself hmm. with a page for each paragraph, but I couldn't help myself and I ate it all at once. <laughs> Hi, I'm Christina. I've got a terrible sweet tooth. My parents were happy about my achievements at school, so they let me drink as much soda and eat as much ice cream and chocolate as I wanted. Yummy. Unsurprisingly, by the time I turned 16, I had gained a lot of weight. But so what? It didn't bother me. My boyfriend Austin liked me for the way I was. Austin and I had been friends since elementary school. He was shy and awkward when he transferred into our class. I sat down next to him and helped him get used to the new school. We'd been inseparable ever since. After a while, he asked me to go out. Wow, I agreed and I wasn't disappointed. Austin grew into a very handsome guy. All the girls were crazy about him, but hands off because he's mine. <laughs> However, recently my boyfriend had been growing distant. For example, whenever I invited him to a picnic, he would say, sorry, Christina, but I'm going roller skating with my friends. I would invite you, but you don't like sports, do you? And damn right I didn't. I hated gym class, so I didn't mind. Then one day, I made his favorite chocolate cupcakes and brought them to school to surprise him. Guess who? Jill? Oh, it's you, Christina. That pissed me off. Why'd he call me by another girl's name? But Austin said he was just messing with me and he'd immediately recognized me. Huh. But then he didn't sit next to me in the dining room because according to him, it was too bright in there. <laughs> what was up with him? I was so frustrated I ate all the cupcakes myself. 
At that moment, Adrian was passing by. He snorted. Can't you see that your boyfriend is ashamed of you? Adrian was the star of the school volleyball team and also did horse riding. He considered himself an amazing athlete and had very high opinions of himself. Mind your own business. Austin isn't like that. <laughs> You're just too afraid to face the truth. <sighs> I got mad, so I decided to prove it was complete nonsense. So the next time Austin was leaving to hang out with his friends, I insisted that I come too. Um, well, okay. They were roller skating in an extreme park. I tried to join them and I almost fell over. I felt like a newborn deer. My legs were wobbly and I immediately started wheezing. Austin told me to sit on a swing and rest up. He helped me to get there and I sat down. Ow! The swing cracked and broke and I fell to the ground. Oops. I wanted to laugh it off. That could have happened to anyone, right? But then I noticed that Austin's friends were laughing. My boyfriend turned red like a tomato. You look like a huge jelly. Lose some weight if you want to be with me. For now, we're done. He stormed away and I was left sitting on the ground. I was gutted. I didn't leave my room for the next several days and I just ate my sadness away. But soon, I got tired of it. I wasn't a jelly, I, I was tough. So I threw out all the candy and I promised myself I would lose weight and get Austin back. You will be mine. It was the beginning of the summer holidays, so I had plenty of time to get in shape. I tried a bunch of popular diets, installed some apps for losing weight, and did all kinds of sports. Come on, go away, chubby cheeks. A couple of weeks of hard work and... There was still no miracle. No matter how hard I tried, I was still fat. Moreover, my parents were worried about all the strict diets, saying they weren't good for my health. So they were constantly bringing me snacks. One day, I couldn't stand it any longer and I snapped. I give up. I'll never lose weight. Whatever, come to me, bun. That night, I was woken up by a sharp pain in my side. I had a fever and I felt so weak I couldn't get out of bed. I got scared and I called for my parents, who then called a doctor. He examined me and said I had appendicitis. I was immediately hospitalized and I underwent surgery. I later found out that the surgery was a very tough one because of my weight. I had to spend a lot of time recovering in the hospital. The doctors put me on a therapeutic diet. Jeez, these were not the holidays of my dreams. And the whole time I was in a terrible mood. I kept seeing photos of Austin on my feet on top of everything else. He was visiting his grandmother in Italy and posting pictures of himself, plus his new friends, having a great time in restaurants. That traitor. While he was having fun, I was choking down hospital food and doing physical therapy. But soon, I realized that my pajamas were too big for me. Can you imagine? I had actually finally started to lose weight. When I was discharged, I tried to keep eating and exercising just like I had in the hospital. And by the time the new year started, voila, I had become the best version of myself. I bought new clothes because now I look like I was wearing a tent in my old ones. <laughs> I went to school feeling like Miss Universe. The boys were looking at me with admiration and the girls with envy. Adrian sat down on the edge of my desk and winked at me. You look great, Chris. How'd you lose so much weight? Ugh, what a jerk. He was only hitting on me because I'd gotten thin. I didn't want to admit that I'd lost weight so quickly because I was hospitalized. So I told him I worked out a lot and followed a strict diet. Wow, breaking up with Austin was so good for you. Let's go horseback riding. Perhaps another me in a parallel universe would say yes, but I'm saying no. At that moment, Austin walked into the classroom. I was worried about his reaction. After all, he'd promised we would get back together if I had lost weight. However, Austin spent a carefree summer eating delicious foods in Italy, and it showed. He had chubby cheeks and a tummy now. But I didn't care about that. Pinch me. Christina, is that you? I worked really hard so we could be together again. Do you like me more now? You're gorgeous. Adrian snorted sarcastically and called Austin shallow. As if he was one to talk. Austin asked me out on a date. The second chapter of our relationship began. Now, we could do so many of the things that I used to miss out on because of my weight. For example, now I felt so much more confident roller skating. Hey! <laughs> I want to go faster! But Austin was having a hard time doing something that he used to like so much. He often stopped to catch his breath. <sighs> Slow down, Chris. <laughs> These days, my boyfriend looked like a big old teddy bear. And I didn't mind. In the meantime, Adrian kept hitting on me, and it was getting annoying. One day, I caught him trying to put Katy Perry concert tickets in my locker. Dude, stop! 
just forget about it. I'm not gonna date you. Life was wonderful. Everyone was asking me for advice on working out and proper nutrition. I pretended that I knew what I was talking about and told them about the methods that I'd read on the internet. I probably should have just told them the truth about the hospital, but I would have stopped being so popular. I thought Austin and I were doing great, but then my boyfriend started acting weird. He was always texting someone and refused to post any photos of us together. And one day, I saw him buying women's perfume. He claimed it was a gift for his mom. Huh. It just all seemed really fishy, so I decided to get to the bottom of it. I put on my roller skates and I hid in the bushes near his house. And soon, he left, and I sneakily followed him. Austin came up to a girl sitting on a bench, kissed her, and gave her the wow. perfume he bought. Jill, I'm sorry we haven't seen much of each other lately. My heart sank. I couldn't believe my boyfriend was cheating on me. Tears stung my eyes. It really got to me. I left without even making a scene. I skated away from that traitor as fast as I could, crying like a freaking baby. I couldn't even see where I was going through all my tears. And bam! I crashed into some guy and knocked him down. We fell on the grass. I landed on top of the stranger and wasn't hurt. However, the boy groaned. Ow. Christina, you're not very graceful. I rubbed my eyes and I realized I was lying on top of Adrian. He helped me up and asked me why I was crying. I told him all about Austin cheating on me. I knew it! What a jerk. Chris, there's something else you should know about too. Remember that time you fell off the swing? I doubt I'll ever forget that. Austin set it all up. I saw him messing with the swing. It seemed odd, so I watched him from afar. And then I saw him lead you to the swing and sit you down. I couldn't believe it. So that hadn't been an accident? I should have told you about it right away, but I didn't want to be a snitch. I decided I would show you that he didn't deserve you instead. But then the holidays began and I didn't see you for months. <sighs> well, better late than never. Adrian walked me home and we chatted a little more. It cheered me up a bit, but when I was left alone again, I started crying. The next morning, Austin was acting like nothing had happened. I told him that I knew everything. You can stop pretending now. Austin was stunned, but then he calmly said he was glad I'd found out the truth. Your weight actually had nothing to do with it. I started dating Jill a long time ago, but I never had the courage to tell you the truth. So I broke the swing to have an excuse to break up with you. I was sure you would never be able to lose the weight. But when I saw how much you changed, I knew I had to keep my word. That's why I started dating you again, even though I still really like Jill. I'm sorry. Austin looked so hmm. sad and guilty. I couldn't bear it, so I just forgave him. We talked and decided we were better off as friends. I focused on studying because I didn't want to wallow in my misery. Adrian was good at sports, but not so much at anything else. Also, he wasn't as much of a bastard as I thought. So I decided to help him improve his academic performance. We ended up spending more time together. At first, we were just studying, but then we also went roller skating and horseback riding. And soon after that, we became an item. Austin was doing great too. He was openly dating Jill. However, he couldn't get back into shape and just kept getting fatter. I really liked Adrian, but it wasn't like I could just turn off liking my ex-boyfriend either. One day, I heard Austin arguing with Jill. She was saying she was breaking up with him because of his weight. Well, hey, that's some karma. <laughs> Imagine my surprise when he came up to me the next day with a bouquet of marmalade worms. Huh? Christina, please come back to me. The nerve of him. As soon as his precious little Jill broke up with him, he came crawling back to me. It made my blood boil, hmm. so I decided I would teach him a lesson. Yeah, okay. As soon as you lose weight, we can start dating again. I knew that wasn't gonna happen, but I thought I'd give him a taste of his own medicine. Spring break soon arrived. Adrian and I had a great time. <laughs> we went on new adventures every single day. But then one day, Austin called me and said that he'd injured his back while exercising and was now on bed rest. Huh? He asked me to visit him sometime because he was dying of boredom. No one's here to take care of me because my parents are spending their vacation in the Maldives. I immediately rushed to Austin. That poor guy. I felt guilty because it was my fault he was going to the gym and got injured. I visited him every day and I brought him his favorite sweets to cheer him up. Let me fluff the pillow for you. Are you comfortable? Thank you, Christina. You're a miracle worker. I put a bag of takeout in front of him and I was about to leave. But to my surprise, Austin asked me to stay. Huh? Could you stay a bit longer? I don't want to be alone. I feel so helpless. I can't even stand up by myself. 
He looked at me with such huge, tearful eyes and reminded me it was my fault he'd been working out so much. So I really had no choice but to agree. I called Adrian and mm. I canceled our plans. Austin and I spent the whole evening wow. watching TV shows and eating fast food. The same thing happened the next day. I spent more and more time with my ex-boyfriend. We played video games, watched movies, and ate junk food. Of course, I was starting to gain weight again. Adrian was mad that I was constantly hanging out with Austin. I can't do this anymore. You have to choose one of us. Do you want to date him? How could you be so selfish? Austin got injured and needs help. I see you made your choice a long time ago. He looked disappointed as he left, and I went back to Austin. We'd grown really close again lately. Maybe our bodies weren't perfect, but we really felt comfortable with each other. I bought pizza and ice cream, and I headed to Austin's place. I got there much earlier than usual. The first thing I noticed was the sound of a guitar. Mm. Huh. I went into the living room and I froze. Austin was jumping around on the couch playing Guitar Hero. Ah, oh, yeah, I'm a rock star. I live for the applause. He jumped up, stuck the landing, and only then noticed me. He nearly jumped out of his skin and tried to come up with excuses. Christy? Um, the thing is, I suddenly felt better. You helped me recover faster. Stop lying. Were you ever even hurt? You lied to me again. <sighs> he suddenly frowned and said that I had lied to everyone about how I'd lost my weight too. How did he even know about that? I really did go to the gym for you. I lifted too much weight and I hurt my back. So then I had to go to the hospital. There was a folder named after you on the doctor's computer and I opened it while I was out. That's how I found out you lost your weight thanks to a long rehabilitation in the hospital, not exercising. Austin said that he'd come up with a plan after that. He was too lazy to work hard, so he'd pretended to be sick so I'd feel guilty and start dating him again. It finally dawned on me what a piece of work he was. I said we were done. I would never even look in his direction again. <sighs> I had learned my lesson. I was so ashamed of how I'd treated Adrian, I didn't know if he would ever forgive me. However, I decided I would tell him the truth about how I really lost my weight anyway. I just liked it when everyone was admiring me. It's not something I'm proud of. Adrian smiled and said that when I was sitting on diets and exercising, I expected the results too quickly and gave up. You've been really active lately. If you keep moving a lot, you'll get back in shape. I thanked him for his advice and I left. I didn't dare ask him for a second chance. The next day, I went to the park to roller skate. I was totally out of practice and I almost fell over, but someone held me up. It was Adrian. Mind some company? Let's go. And Adrian and I grew close again. He not only saw my inner beauty, but helped me see it too. I don't think about the past anymore, deceive anyone or change anyone who doesn't deserve it. Tennis practice was over and I was going home. I was the best player in the club. Everyone called me the golden racket. My biggest rival, Annie, hated that. She envied me and always tried to mess with me. We were leaving the club when we ran into each other. Neither of us wanted to make way for the opponent, and we almost started fighting like wildcats again. Get out of my way. Let me through. I finally got outside, put on some headphones, and went home listening to Lady Gaga. But then the world went dark like someone had turned off a light. I felt a sharp pain, and I don't know what came next. Hi, I'm Gloria. This is my story. Please press like and subscribe. I came to in a hospital. My head was throbbing, and my worried parents were sitting next to me. When they saw that I was awake, they immediately hugged me. What happened? Mom and Dad exchanged worried glances. It turned out that I had fainted on the way home. Passersby called an ambulance, and I was brought to the hospital. The doctors found out there was some sort of neoplasm in my head that made me lose consciousness. Wow, what a bombshell. I hadn't even known there was something wrong with my head. The surgery was successful, though. Once your hair grows back, you'll forget about it all like a bad dream. I asked them for a mirror, and my eyes <gasps> bugged out. They had shaved off part of my hair for the surgery, and now there was a huge and ugly scar in its place. This is a nightmare! My beautiful hair, it's gone! What matters is you're healthy now. My parents often visited me in the hospital and brought me snacks to cheer me up. My boyfriend Caleb also called me every day and told me everything interesting that was happening at school. Everyone really misses you, so get better soon. And one day, Annie showed up too. Can you imagine? She said she felt really sorry for me and wished me well. Did you come here to gloat? Don't even dream about beating me at tennis. As soon as I get better, I'm going back to training. I chased away my rival and I told my parents about her visit. 
they got mad too and promised to make sure that Annie wouldn't be allowed to visit me anymore. Lying in the hospital bed was terribly boring. When I was finally discharged, I was all too happy to run away like I was the Flash. I came home and I was lost for words. While I was gone, my parents had made repairs and bought a lot of new appliances. I was surprised because we'd never been able to afford luxuries like these before. We've been saving money for a long time. A brand new computer was waiting for me in my room! Yay! I was so glad I could go back to school again! But my mood was ruined when I looked in the mirror. I was afraid that my classmates would look at me and burst out laughing. Caleb hadn't seen me since the surgery either. I sent him a selfie and I wrote that I was ashamed of my scar. But Caleb's reply made me smile. Nothing could ruin your beauty. <laughs> what a sweetheart, right? In the morning, Caleb came to pick me up so we could go to school together. To my surprise, he pulled a wig out of his backpack and handed it to me. Um, ta-da. You said you were feeling insecure because of your scar, so I thought maybe you would want to cover it with a wig. Hey, that's brilliant. Why didn't I think of it? Thank you. I put on the wig and we went to school. <sighs> Can you smell the vanilla and the chocolate? Mmm, it always smelled like that near the local pastry shop. We were walking by it when a little boy ran out of it and bumped into us. The owner of the pastry shop ran out after him. Stop the thief! The boy clung to me, terrified, and burst out sobbing. Now I saw that he was wearing poor clothes and clutching a cake in his hands. It turned out that he had stolen it. I'm sorry, we barely ever get sweets at the orphanage, and your cakes look so delicious I couldn't resist. That poor kid, I felt so sorry for him. The bakery owner kept shouting that he would call the police and the thief would be punished. Ugh, he was so greedy. So I took my purse and I paid for the cake. He's just a kid, don't yell like that. Promise you're not gonna steal again. Thank you, good fairy. The boy ran away and we hurried to school. All my classmates already knew that I had undergone surgery. They immediately surrounded me and started to ask me to show them my scar. I didn't really want to. But everyone was being nice about it, so I took the wig off. Wow, you look like a heroine from a computer game. Oh, did, did they like my scar? It seemed I'd been worried for nothing. Then Caleb grabbed my elbow and pulled me aside. Gloria, can't you see that they're mocking you? They call you brave to your face and then they laugh behind your back. Put the wig back on and don't embarrass yourself. My classmates seemed sincere to me, but maybe Caleb was right. After all, he cared about me, and the students liked gossiping. So I put the wig back on, and I decided I wouldn't take it off until my hair had grown back. Gloria, can I take a picture with you? Drop the act! I'm done! Leave me alone! I wanted to forget all about the surgery and just go back to living a normal life. But I was constantly reminded of it at school. My classmates were asking me dumb questions, and the teachers kept giving me grades that were way too high out of pity. I came back home majorly pissed off, and then I saw a guy leaving our house. He got into the car and drove away, and I asked my parents who that was. Mom and Dad looked nervous. He, um, got the wrong address. I didn't believe them, but I had no time to get to the bottom of it. After all, I was running late for practice. My parents saw me with a racket in my hands and frowned. Gloria, it's too early for you to go back to sports. You need to fully recover first. Ugh, why was everyone acting like I was fragile? I said I felt fine and I stormed out. I ran into Annie at the locker room of the sports club. My eyes almost popped out of my sockets. She was pulling clothes out of her new bag. It was Kylie Jenner's latest collection. That thing cost a fortune. Where did Annie get so much money? Huh? Her parents were just as poor as mine. When my rival saw me, she flinched like she'd saw a ghost. Gloria, I didn't expect to see you here. I'm glad you're feeling better. Save your fake smiles for somebody else. We're rivals, not friends. Something was clearly up with Annie. I was expecting her to snap back as usual, but she stayed silent. She kept squinting at me and nervously biting her lips. I decided that she was just upset that I'd finally returned. After all, she stood no chance at beating me. <laughs> She would never be my match. I confidently walked out onto the court. It was time to show them how it was done. I quickly moved my hand and oh. the world went dark. My head started spinning oh. and I almost fell. Annie ran up to me, helped me to a bench and brought me some water. I don't think you're ready to go back to training yet. Don't even think about it. I'm not giving up. Annie shrugged and walked away. It seemed I really hadn't fully recovered from the surgery yet, but I didn't want to admit it. Hmm? Someone suddenly blocked the sun. 
I looked up and I saw my coach, who was fuming. Gloria, you shouldn't strain yourself. Go home and don't come back until you're fully recovered. Holy crud. Annie must have ratted me out. I told her everything I thought of her, picked up my racket, and went home. I was bubbling with anger. It felt like the whole world had turned against me. I wanted to see Caleb. He always knew how to cheer me up. But just as I pulled out my phone to call him, I heard his voice nearby. Hmm. I carefully looked around the corner and I saw him with his friends. They were laughing loudly. One of Caleb's friends suddenly asked him where his girlfriend was. To be honest, I kind of want to dump Gloria. I only dated her because she was beautiful, but now her ugly scar is giving me nightmares. What did he just say? Huh? I couldn't believe it. I wanted to start crying like a baby. But then I decided I wouldn't give him the satisfaction. I came around from the corner and I threw my wig at Caleb. We're done. And then I proudly walked huh? away. But then I heard heavy breathing and hurried footsteps behind me. I was sure it was Caleb. Imagine hmm. my surprise when I turned around and saw Annie. We need to talk. I can't keep quiet about this any longer. You deserve to know the truth. What are you talking about? And then she told me what she saw the night I fainted and what really happened to me. A car was speeding down the road and lost control and drove onto the sidewalk where you'd been walking. You probably didn't hear it because you were wearing headphones. Annie told me that she'd called an ambulance and then my parents. When they'd arrived, the driver huh? gave them money so they wouldn't report him to the police. He also gave me money for my silence. I knew it was wrong and I didn't want to take it, but your parents convinced me that it would be better that way. So I used it to buy an expensive handbag, but I realized afterward that a clear conscience is more important to me. I listened mm. to her story and then I burst out laughing. <laughs> nice try, but I trust my parents more than I trust you. Now get out of my way. I've had a bad day, but I couldn't stop thinking about Annie's words. It seemed fishy that my parents had suddenly saved up enough money for repairs. I decided to ask them for my records from the hospital to put my mind at ease. When I came up to their bedroom door, I heard something weird and stopped. I'm worried that Annie will sooner or later tell Gloria the truth, and then her daughter will find out she never had a tumor in her head, and where we actually got the money from. Don't worry, I took care of everything. I called Gloria's coach and asked him to ban her from practice. What? I kicked the door open like a cowboy from a western and I walked into the room. I can't believe you were bought so easily. How could you hide the truth from me? I didn't give them a chance to explain themselves and I ran out into the street. My feet carried me to Annie's house. I always thought you were just a mean and jealous girl, but you're the only one who's been actually honest with me. Thank you. Now tell me, who was behind the wheel that day? What are you up to? Serving justice. With Annie's help, I found out that I'd ended up in the hospital because of a guy called Jim K, whose father owned a chain of restaurants all over the country. I saw Jim's picture on social media and I immediately recognized him. Hmm. That was the guy I'd seen leaving our house. Annie and I found his address and immediately went over. You, but I already gave money to your parents. I demand that you go to the police and tell them what you did. Huh? Otherwise, I'll do it for you. I saw everything and I can testify as a witness. You'll be in a world of trouble. To my surprise, Jim looked down and said he actually hadn't been sleeping well since the incident because his conscience was tormenting him. I know I screwed up. I'm sorry I almost ruined your life, but I'm a good person. I even started helping people to atone. I sponsor nursing homes and orphanages. He started sobbing very convincingly, but mm. Annie and I weren't buying it. Then Jim promised to prove that he was telling the truth. So I decided to give him a chance. In the morning, the three of us met at an orphanage. Jim led Annie and me inside. The place looked depressing. Shabby walls, mold, and draft. This place needs repairs, so I'm working on it. In the meantime, I've been bringing these kids here sweets, toys, and clothes. We looked into the room and we saw children happily eating sweets and playing mm. with new toys. I even recognized one of the boys there. He waved happily at me. Hello, good fairy. Look at all these cakes. Tears stung my eyes. The kids look so happy. If Jim went to jail, there would be no one to help them. So I decided I shouldn't be selfish and I forgave him. Everybody makes mistakes. He was trying to do good now and that's what mattered. Okay, I see that you're a good guy. Keep up the good work. Annie and I played with the kids for a bit more and left. 
course, my life had changed after the incident. I found out how shallow Caleb was, for one. Huh? I also had to stop playing tennis for a while, and I didn't know if I would ever be able to forgive my parents for lying. But I did get a new friend out of it. Annie turned out to be a good and honest girl. We often hung out together. But then one day, I was coming back from school when I saw that boy from the orphanage. He was hanging around the bakery and looking at the window with hungry eyes. I came up to him and asked him why he was wearing ragged clothes again. After all, Jim had said he would buy new clothes for the kids. I don't know. After you and your friend left, they took everything they gave us away. Huh? Excuse me? How could that be? I called the orphanage and I talked to its director. It turns out that as soon as Annie and I left, Jim really did take everything he brought for the kids away. And of course, he wasn't planning to pay the repairs there, and he'd never helped any nursing homes. Jim lied to us, and I believed it and forgave him. <sighs> that bastard. He wouldn't get away with it. I was so mad I looked like a little pink hulk. I started frantically developing a plan. First, I'd go to the police, then on television, and finally, make a bunch of posts on social media. I would do absolutely anything to make hmm. Jim K get the punishment he deserved. I ran home and I started rummaging through my parents' things to find my records from the hospital. The police wouldn't believe me without them. But then, my mom and my dad suddenly came in. Sweetie, please listen to us. I don't want to hear it. We know you're disappointed in us, but we took the money for your sake. We didn't tell you the truth because we knew how you'd react. Jim K is very rich and he would have hired the best lawyers out there and won the trial. At least we got enough money to buy you a new computer and pay for your college. I tried to ignore them, but then Annie called me. You won't guess what just happened. It turned out that she had just found out that Jim K had violated traffic rules again and crashed into a candy store window. When the police arrived, they found out he didn't even have a driver's license. It caused an uproar in the press because he was the son of a powerful businessman. Jim's father decided not to help him so he wouldn't anger the public. Now, that spoiled liar would get everything he deserved. <laughs> wow, Yay! that was karma. I felt at peace, and I even forgave my parents. You did a bad thing. Promise me you will never deceive me again. And I want all the money that Jim gave you to be sent to the orphanage. They agreed, and we hugged. Annie donated Jim's dirty money to charity, too. We're still friends. I decided it was time for a change, and I shaved off the hair over my scar. It would be my best feature and always remind me of what happened. I became popular at school because everyone thought I was really brave. Caleb wanted us to become an item huh? again. But you know what? I know my value, but I'm not for sale. So I turned him down. Grandma Miriam came for a visit, and we went to a restaurant for dinner. I had to sit between my grandmother and younger sister Clara as we drove huh? there. They both looked annoyed and glared at me. It's so cramped in here. Move, Brooke. It seems someone has been overeating. Oh, I'd had it with them. I wasn't as slim as everyone else in my family. I was adopted when I was seven. Those are my adoptive parents, my spoiled younger sister Clara and Grandma Miriam, who had never liked me. And that's me, Brooke. I used to live in suburban Boston. That's where the orphanage I was left at as an infant was. I didn't know anything about my biological mother, but my father had often visited me. Unfortunately, he was too young and poor to raise a child. Baby, as soon as I get back on my feet, I will buy a big house for us and take you away from here. I believed him and waited for better days, but they didn't come. Dad started coming less and less and looked sad and tired every time. But one day, he said that all our dreams would soon come wow. true. See that huge business center? It belongs to a large company, Boston Dynamics. They hired me. I'm going to earn a lot of money soon. Yay! I was over the moon because I believed that dad would finally take me home. However, that was the last time dad came to see me. I thought he got rich and forgot all about me. So I was pissed off at him. This photograph was all I had to remember him by. Then, one day, a smiling woman came to the orphanage. Brooke, look how pretty you are. I want to adopt you. That's huh? how I met my new family. I was a very cute child, Whoa. so it wasn't surprising my adoptive parents chose me. They brought me to Boston, where I met my adoptive younger sister. Clara didn't want to share her parents' attention. Mom, look, I'm a real princess. Wait a minute, honey, I'm braiding your sister's hair. She's oh. not my sister. I don't know her. Clara was so mad she threw away all my toys. Our parents loved us equally, but my grandmother huh? Miriam always took my sister's side. Look at all these delicious cakes. They're all for my dear granddaughter, Clara. Sorry, Brooke. 
I didn't bring anything for you. As I got older, I started to gain weight hmm. and my adoptive family began to treat me worse. My mother was extremely worried about my figure. She kept trying to put me on a diet. That day at the restaurant, they were enjoying all sorts of delicious food in the restaurant while I was only allowed to eat salad. Brooke, you need to watch your figure. Oh, come on, I only ate vegetables. I went to the bathroom and when I came back, I saw that my family was taking selfies without me. Huh? I felt so alone. In the evening, Clara smirked at me. Huh. Mom and Dad are already saving up money for my college tuition hmm. because I'm their real daughter. They don't care about you at all. I didn't believe her. I knew that there were two piggy banks in our parents' study, one with my name on it and the other with my sister's. Huh? I sneaked in there and saw that Clara's piggy bank was stuffed with bills. However, in mine, there were only spiders. I realized that I truly wasn't part of their family when I accidentally overheard my mom talking to Grandma Miriam. I regret adopting Brooke. That was the last straw for me. I ran to my room in tears. I kept a picture of my real dad under my pillow. He was also chubby and definitely wouldn't judge me for my weight. Hmm, could I find him? At first, I tried searching on social media, but couldn't find a Stan Rogers that looked like my dad. That's when I remembered dad was hired by the Boston Dynamics Company before he left me. They would help me, I was sure of it. It's time for a little trip, Brooke. I packed my things and dad's photo and sneaked outside. I took the bus to the suburbs, where the company's office was located and where I used to live. Wow, everything here looks the same. I called a taxi and arrived at the company's office. The security guard didn't want to let me in for a long time. When I finally managed to get into the building, I found the director's office and confidently walked in. Kids can't come in here. I'm just looking for my dad. His name is Stan Rogers. Here's a picture of him. The man looked at the photo, disinterested, hmm. typed his name into the computer, and said that they did not have and had never had an employee by that huh? name. What? Did dad lie about being hired? What was I supposed to do now? I didn't have a backup plan. I had almost no money left and I wandered aimlessly around the city. My stomach was growling, it was getting dark, and I had nowhere to go. I found a diner, sat down at a table, and spent the last of my money on hot chocolate. As I drank it, I sadly looked at the photo of my father. Where am I supposed to look for you now? I was beginning to think that I would have to go home, but then the diner owner walked past me and looked at the photo with interest. Huh? Hmm, he looks familiar. Of course, it's Stan Rogers. Do you know my dad? He worked as a dishwasher here for years. A dishwasher? Oh, dad must have felt embarrassed about his job and lied about working for Boston Dynamics. My mom started calling me. Oh, had they realized I'd run away? I couldn't stop now that I had a leave, so I declined the call and texted my mom that I wouldn't come back because they were better off without me. And then I asked the diner owner if she knew where I could find Stan Rogers. For some reason, the look she gave me was very sad. I do, honey. Let's go, I'll take you there. The woman seemed sad, but I was over the moon. I could barely believe I got so lucky. We got into her car and drove to... <gasps> oh no, no freaking way. We arrived at a cemetery. And then the woman led me to a tombstone. I'm really sorry, honey, but Stan Rogers has been gone for a while now. I couldn't believe my eyes. I fell over in shock, buried my face in the woman's shoulders, and burst out crying like a baby. Now I knew why dad had stopped visiting me. I had been mad at him for years because I thought he had forgotten about me. But he was gone. There, there, stop crying. <laughs> you don't understand. I'm all alone. <laughs> I don't have anyone. <laughs> what about Stan's parents though? Your grandparents? What? Now that I had thought about it, she was right. The woman told me that my relatives didn't live far, and then she even gave me a ride to their house. I walked up huh? to their porch and knocked on their door, mm -hmm. excited. A lovely old couple opened it. Who are you, girl? I'm sorry for coming so late. Maybe you should sit down for this. I'm your granddaughter. My name is Brooke. I showed them the photo of my father and told them that I lived in the local orphanage until I was seven and he used to visit me. They gasped and looked at each other, dumbfounded. <gasps> yes, this is our Stan. They invited me in and showed me the room where my dad used to live. It was so exciting. We haven't touched anything here since he moved out. And then we talked late into the night. I found out that my grandparents hadn't even known I existed. They also told me about my dad. He was a good boy, but a little clueless. 
He dropped out of school and couldn't find a good job. And one day, he started dating a girl from a rich family. Her parents wouldn't let them get married. They took their daughter away to a big city to keep them apart. Could that be my real mom? Dad had never told me anything about her. I didn't even know her name. I asked my grandparents to tell me more about that girl, but they just shrugged and said that they didn't know how to find her and didn't even remember her name. We are old and our memory is not what it used to be. So many years have passed. I sighed and asked them what happened to dad. It turned out that he had had poor health. He worked a lot and did not follow his doctor's recommendations. I suddenly remembered mm -hmm. that he hadn't looked good the last time I saw him. I felt gutted. My grandparents noticed it and changed the subject. They started asking me about my life. I didn't tell them I'd run away from home and just said I was adopted by a family from Boston and showed them photos of them on my phone. This is my adoptive sister and this is my mom. I always felt like a stranger living with them, so I wanted to find my real parents. My grandparents looked at the photos and then suddenly said that it was time for them to go to bed. Stay with us for a while. You can take Stan's old room. I was very grateful for the invitation. After all, I didn't want to go back to the people who didn't want me. I finally found my real relatives. A few days passed. I stayed with my grandparents and helped them around the house. In the evenings, we played Monopoly or drank lemonade on the porch. During that time, we grew close and became a real family. After Stan died, we felt so empty. But now you're here, Brooke, and you filled the void he left behind. We are so happy we have a granddaughter now. I loved living with them too. So I kept ignoring the calls and messages from my mom. My grandparents didn't know that I had run away from home or that my adoptive family was probably looking for me. After all, it would have upset them. But the truth couldn't stay hidden forever. One day, we went shopping and I saw milk packages with photos of me and the words, help us find her on them. Oh no, my grandparents couldn't see that. I grabbed their hands and dragged them to another department. Let's go here. Uh, help me choose an um air freshener. But we need to buy milk. It's all spoiled. Uh, I'll buy some tomorrow. Oof. I hope they hadn't noticed anything. In the evening, I watered my grandma's flowers and decided to check my social media. However, I couldn't mm. find my phone anywhere. I started rummaging through the drawers in dad's room and suddenly saw a piece of a photograph. A man and a woman were hugging each other in it. Their faces had for some reason been cropped out, but I was sure those were my mom and dad. Oh, I wished I could see my real mom's face. I put the picture in my pocket and decided to ask my grandmother if she had seen my phone. She was talking on the phone with her back to me, so she didn't see me walk into the room. Brooke is here. I know you're looking for her. You can come get her. Wait, was she talking about me? What was she up to? I took a closer look at my grandma and realized it was my phone she was holding. After finishing the call, grandma turned to me. Oh, Brooke, you scared me. I'm sorry I took your phone without permission. She reluctantly handed over my phone. I nervously opened my calls and saw that grandma had been talking to my adoptive mom. Heck, grandma and grandpa had found out the truth after all. But the worst thing was that they didn't want me either and decided to get rid of me. I thought you were different, but you don't care about me either. I ran into my room in tears and started to frantically pack up. If my adoptive mom was coming to get me, then I had to get out of there as soon as possible. I pulled my clothes out of the closet and a piece of paper fell out with them. I quickly unfolded and read it. It was a love letter my real mom had sent dad. Dear Stan, my parents took me to Boston. Look after our girl. One day we will see each other again. No way! My real mom had been living in the same city as me this whole time! I finally knew where to look for her. I grabbed my things and ran outside. My grandparents tried to stop me, but I didn't listen to them. I'd had it with traitors. It was late, but I was hoping to catch the last bus to the city. However, it departed from the stop right in front of my eyes. Ugh, why was I so unlucky? But I was too determined to let that stop me. I decided to walk in the dark instead of going back to my fake relatives who smiled to my face and dreamed I would disappear from their lives behind my back. However, soon, my resolve began to crack. It was completely dark. On top of that, it started to rain and there wasn't a soul around. <sighs> it was creepy. I was blinded by the headlights of an oncoming car and froze. The car stopped and my adoptive mom got out of it, shaking with fear. Brooke, I was worried sick. Oh, thank goodness I found you. Hurry up and get in the car. Not for the world. I know you don't love me. I'm going to find my real mom. I took the picture of my parents and shook it in front of her face. My adoptive mom suddenly burst into tears. Brooke, you silly girl. I am your biological mother. I froze in confusion. What was she talking about? 
Mom pulled out two heart-shaped lockets out of her pocket and asked me to open them. Inside one of them, I saw a picture of Dad, and inside the other, a photo of my adoptive mom in her youth. I was so confused. Then, I looked at the photo I'd brought with me again. That's why the faces had been cut out of it. Then, another car drove up to us, and I saw my grandparents. They had got worried and went looking for me too. We hid from the rain to talk about everything. Sweetie, when you were born, Stan and I were so young. Our parents were against our marriage. They wanted us to finish college and find jobs first. That's why they insisted that we leave you at an orphanage. I was taken away to Boston and Stan stayed here and visited you. But unfortunately, he got sick soon. I still keep these lockets though. I never stopped thinking about you, not for a minute. Then she told me that she soon met a man, married him, and Clara was born. They adopted me after buying a big house. I should have told you the truth, but I was so ashamed of everything I've done. And then she told me that she wasn't saving up money for my college tuition because she was sure that I would get a scholarship. After all, I was doing great at school. She was also trying to put me on a diet because she was afraid that I might get sick like my biological father. But I heard you telling Grandma Miriam you regretted adopting me. Of course I did. I should have never left you at an orphanage in the first place. I'm sorry. So that's why Grandma Miriam didn't like me. She was the one who made my mom give up her newborn daughter. We're sorry too. Of course we knew that we had a granddaughter. Back then, we forbade our children from getting married and raising you. But when you showed up on our doorstep, we realized how wrong we had been. After all, you are such a wonderful girl. Grandma and Grandpa had seen my mom in the photo I'd shown them on my phone and realized that I had been living with my real mom that whole time. I was happy that we finally cleared everything up. To be honest, it took me a long time to forgive them. Adults are often afraid that their children wouldn't understand that they are doing some bad things out of love. But imagine how many problems could have been avoided if they hadn't hidden anything from me. That's how I found out that I had a real family. It took some time, but we all made up. And now, I often visit my grandparents. However, Clara and Grandma Miriam still refuse to accept me and don't think of me as family. Hi, I'm Sophie. Do you know why I love history lessons? Instead of making us read boring textbooks, our teacher, Mrs. Stewart, often told us fascinating stories. Oh, you should have seen me in my youth. I was a treasure hunter and an adventurer back then. I even took part in archeological excavations. <laughs> that wow. sweet old lady apparently used to be on par with Lara Croft. While she was reminiscing, my friend Eva and I were shopping online and getting huh? ready for the prom. I saw the dress of my dreams wow. and realized I absolutely had to buy it. I dreamed of being the most beautiful girl at prom ever since elementary school. Choosing the dress was vitally important. Look, Eva, I will outshine everyone if I wear this. My friend shrugged grimly and pointed at the price tag. You're lucky your family is rich and you can afford such expenses. I'll have to buy whatever's on sale. Don't worry, I'll lend you my jewelry. I thought that my friend was in a terrible mood because she was afraid of failing the exams and not getting into a good college. After all, her academic performance wasn't great. At recess, Scott came up to us and asked me to prom. He was so freaking persistent. I'd had it with him. For the last time, you're not my type, Scott. You don't even know me. Eva looked at Scott sternly and told him to stop bothering me. Uh -huh. My friend was so cool. At home, I skipped up to mom and showed her the dress I had chosen. Look, I've already mm. ordered it. Cool, right? Mom smiled slyly and said that she had a better idea. And then she pulled out a hideous dress from the closet. It was terribly old fashioned and reeked of bad taste. Ew, there were initials embroidered on its hem. N.A. What was that monstrosity doing in mom's closet? She said that was the dress she wore to prom. And now she wanted me to wear it too. <laughs> what? It was a crime against fashion. No way. Don't argue with me. This is a family tradition. If you refuse, you will be staying at home in summer instead of going to Europe. Uh, that was so unfair. Those holidays were the last ones before college and I really wanted to spend them with my friends. But I also really wanted to outshine everyone at the prom. What was I supposed to do? I was fuming and came to school the next day in a terrible mood. As luck would have it, Eva's allergy was acting up and she stayed at home. Damn it, I wanted to ask her for advice. I was sadly scrolling through the photos on my phone. I looked at the dress of my dreams and then at the nightmarish rags from my mother's closet. Mrs. Stewart suddenly came up to me and asked me if I was all right. I told her about my problem and showed her the picture of the ugly dress. 
My teacher looked at it and then slyly mm. winked at me. She suggested I put on my mom's dress at home and then change into the dress of my dreams at school. That way, everyone would be happy. Wow. What a brilliant idea! Thank you, Mrs. Stewart. You're a lifesaver. I followed her cunning plan. When the day I had been waiting for finally arrived, I put on the dress my mother wanted me to wear at home and even posed for the family album. Smile, Sophie! Jeez, it stinks. I can't wait to take it off. I hurried to school, hoping that I would have enough time to change before someone saw me wearing that trash. However, I ran into Mrs. Stewart in the locker room. Yes, this dress was old-fashioned even when I was young. I thanked the teacher for her help again and took out my perfect dress from the locker. You will outshine everyone, baby. I left my mother's dress there and hurried to the hall. It was an unforgettable <laughs> evening. Eva, my classmates, and I took a bunch of selfies. And then I became the prom queen. Whee! It was everything I dreamed of. Shall we dance? A queen should have a king. And you think you're fit to be uh -huh. a king? <laughs> Don't make me laugh. You're a court jester at best. I turned Scott down again and went to the stage. Professional actors were performing a cool <laughs> costume play on it. I had a lot of fun and was the center of attention all evening. But soon, the prom came to an end and it was time to go home. As we walked, we laughed and remembered the best moments of our time at school. I came home tired, but very happy. However, it had completely slipped my mind that I had to change back. Oops, huh? mom saw that I was in a different outfit and lost it. Sophie, where's my dress? It, uh, uh, tore, and I threw it away. Uh, luckily, I had a spare outfit. Mom turned pale and clutched her head. She told me that that dress brought good luck. My great-grandmother, grandmother, and mother went to prom in it, and after that, they successfully passed the exams, got into good colleges, and married well. That's why I insisted that you wear it too. Now we're done for. Hmm, my family really was very successful. All my relatives achieved everything they dreamed of. Was it really all thanks to the ugly dress? I didn't want to find out, so I tried to call my mom down. I left it at school. I'll just go get it right now. I ran there as fast as I could and bumped into a cute guy in the locker room. Hey, what are you doing here? This is a girl's locker room. Whoa, easy there. I work here as a cleaner in the evenings. Hmm, have you seen this dress then? I left it here, but now it's gone. The guy's name was Dale. He shook his head and left the locker room. Damn it, mom would go ballistic if I came back empty-handed. I called Eva, hoping she might know something. There are also initials N.A. embroidered on it. My friend said that she had seen the actors put it away with the other props and take it away. It's terrible though, why are you so worried? I told her that the dress brought my family luck and was the reason we were so successful. That's why I had to get it back. Eva calmed me down and told me that I could go to the theater and pick it up in the morning. She was right. I was tired, so I headed home and ran into Dale in the parking lot again. He offered me a ride. It was already dark, so I agreed. We chatted on the way home, and I told him about my problem. Huh, interesting. I'm going to that neighborhood tomorrow morning. Do you want me to pick you up and keep you company while you're searching for the dress? Of course I agreed. Would you say no in my place? After all, Dale was really freaking cute. In the morning, he picked me up as we agreed. We came to the theater and immediately went to the costume designer. I described the dress that they had huh? mistakenly taken to him. Yes, yes, I remember it. I wondered why we had such an ugly dress. I put hmm. it away with the rest of our costumes. Come on, I'll give it back to you. Phew, hallelujah. Mom wouldn't lose it now that the rags had been found. However, when we walked into the prop room, we saw someone in a hoodie grab my dress and jump out huh? the window like they were a circus monkey. Stop! Give it back! I ran after the thief, but they quickly got on a bike and escaped. I was out of breath and couldn't run anymore. A car suddenly honked next to me. It was Dale! Get in! We'll catch up to them! The chase began. I felt like I was in an action movie. We chased after the figure on the bicycle, but that scumbag managed to get away from us through narrow alleys. Holy crud, it was a disaster! Ooh. I was miserable. Dale drove me home and tried to comfort me. Cheer up, you look so nice when you're smiling. Oh, Dale was adorable, but I still had to explain what happened to my mother. My heart sank and smiling was the last thing on my mind. When I told her that the dress had been stolen, my mom collapsed into a chair. This is the end. Dark times are ahead of us. Oh, come on, mom, that's just superstition. I tried to convince her that nothing bad would happen, However, we soon ran into trouble. At first, it wasn't that bad. For example, I dropped my brand new iPhone and its screen broke. And then my mom's car broke down. But things kept getting worse by the day. 
Our basement flooded, and I had trouble preparing for the exams because the internet was down. My mom was so unused to not having a car, she often came late to work and was fired. Now, I believed in the power of that dress. I feared that without it, I wouldn't be accepted into a good college. But guess what? Luck suddenly smiled down on Eva. Her allergy symptoms miraculously cleared up. She met a cool guy and started to brag that she would soon get into the best college in the state. And one day, she called me and said that her relative that she had never even seen had died and left her a car. Can you imagine? I'm going to a college in a fancy car! I was happy for my friend and did not envy her at all, honest. But it was still very suspicious. Hmm. It felt like she had got her hands on a lucky talisman. And then it hit me. I told her about my lucky dress. She even knew it had been in the theater. Did Eva steal it? Of course she would have never told me the truth. I had to ask Dale for help. I called him and told him about my suspicions, and he came up with a cool plan. That evening, we drove up to Eva's house. Dale took a package he'd brought along, rang the doorbell, and pretended to be a postman. Good evening. I have a package for you. Please sign here, here, and here. Meanwhile, I climbed into my friend's room through the window and started to look for the dress. Soon, I saw a familiar hoodie in the closet. It was the hoodie the thief had worn to the theater. So it really had been her. Ugh, I thought she was my friend. My mother's dress was hanging next to the hoodie. Bingo. I quickly stuffed it into my bag and was about to go. But at that moment, Eva walked into the room. She grabbed the bag and we started to play tug of war with it. Give it back! I've always envied you, and I deserve a little oh. love, too! Oh. Yeah, dream on! The dress belongs to us! Dale honked, and it distracted my former friend. Look, uh -huh. it's Johnny Depp! I grabbed the bag and ran out into the street. Step on it, Dale! He drove me home. I hugged him gratefully and took the dress from the back seat. Thanks for the help. You're adorable! We agreed to go on a date sometime, and I went home. Look, Mom, I have brought the dress back, so everything's going to be okay. Mom opened the bag and stared at me in surprise. Um, huh? actually, I was pretty confused too, because there were only some pink rags inside. What's this? I realized that I must have taken the wrong bag from Dale's car. I immediately called him. But, to my surprise, he had turned off his phone. Hmm, that was weird. I didn't know his address, but I remembered that Dale worked as a janitor at school. Hmm. They would know where I could find him. However, I was in for a disappointment. The principal shrugged and said that they had never had such an employee. Did the bastard help me get the dress back only to take it for himself? I didn't know what to do. I was even thinking about going to the police, but I doubted that anyone would investigate the theft of a century-old dress. So I came home and told my mom that I had done everything I could. She was gutted and stopped looking for a new job, but I wasn't ready to give up yet. So I tried my best to prepare for the college entrance exams. One day, as I was coming back from the store, I ran into Scott. Oh, that was the last thing I needed. It's been a while, Sophie. Have you heard the news? Mrs. Stewart was arrested. Can you imagine? Wow. Scott showed me a news article about our teacher and her grandson who huh? were arrested for trying to steal a rare dress. In the photo from the arrest, Dale was standing next to Mrs. Stewart. He must have been her grandson. They were holding my mother's dress. My teacher had planned everything and sent her grandson to steal the dress from the locker room. However, first the actors had taken it by mistake and then Eva had stolen it. Why were all those wackos going bonkers? I told Scott about my misadventures and he offered me help. I was pretty desperate, so I agreed. We sat down in a cafe and started to search for information on the internet. I turned out to be a bad detective, but Scott managed to find out a lot of interesting things. It turned out that the famous designer Nigel Atkinson mm -hmm. designed that dress almost a hundred years ago for his muse. Wow, that's what those initials stood for, N.A. We even found a black and white picture of that designer and his muse on a website about the history of fashion. Wait a minute, that was my great-grandmother in her youth. I saw her photos in our family album. So that's where that dress came from. It had been passed down from generation to generation, and everyone believed that it brought good luck. Mrs. Stewart was an adventurer and a history expert, so she immediately realized the value of the dress. That's why she decided to steal it. Was it truly magical, though? I doubted that, since it didn't stop my teacher from getting arrested. It turned out that my relatives were successful because they worked hard and not thanks to the dress. That helped me regain my confidence. Soon, I successfully passed the exams and got into the college of my dreams. And the coolest thing was, I knew it all happened because I worked hard and not thanks to magic. I had an awesome summer to look forward to. Everything that happened helped me see Eva for who she really was, an envious and vile girl. But I also saw Scott in a new light. Now I knew he was a cheerful and sincere guy. 
It was a shame I had been too arrogant to see it before. At least now, we had a lot of free time we could spend together. Things were looking up. But mom was still suffering because she was sure that without the dress, she was just a loser. But one day, the police knocked on our door. Ma'am, we have closed the case and the criminals have been punished. So we are giving you back your dress. It's no longer evidence. Mom jumped for joy and the policeman was baffled. Are you all right? Don't mind her, she's just over the moon. Yay, now I'll be able to find a good job again. I did not try to convince her that the dress wasn't magical. If believing in a lucky charm made her happy, then who was I to stop her? But that wasn't all. Scott and I went to the airport at the beginning of the holidays. And on the way there, we ran into Eva. She hadn't gotten into a good college, and the car she inherited turned out to be a rusty wreck. The most annoying thing was that she blamed me for all her failures. However, Eva's allergy went away because she started to take a new medicine, and not because of the dress. And Eva only had herself to blame for failing the exams. She should have studied harder. What are you staring at? It's nothing. I just wanted to tell you that I've forgiven you. <laughs> I don't need your pity. I didn't really care that she was still mad at me. Being negative and dreaming of revenge would only hurt me. Hi there, I'm Nikki. My mom was a famous jewelry designer. We were swimming in money. Unfortunately, sparkling diamonds sometimes attract the attention of bad people. That's why I was betrayed. <laughs> don't worry, it's actually quite a funny story. Don't believe it? Press like and get comfy. I loved to throw fancy parties and make dramatic entrances. One day, I decided to jump out of a huge cake at my own birthday party. Everyone would be lost for words. The waiter rolled the cake I was in wow. into the room with my friends and my boyfriend, Hugh. I was waiting for the lights to be turned off so I could jump out and surprise the guests. However, while I was in the cake, I heard what my close friends really thought mm -hmm. about me. They were saying that I was insufferable and they only hung out with me for the sake of money. Can you believe it? Nikki is so annoying. If she didn't give me expensive gifts, I would have dumped her a long time ago. I couldn't believe you said that. I couldn't bear it any longer, so I jumped out of the cake and I kicked everyone out of the party and my life. I was gutted, but decided that I wouldn't cry because of some fakes. I deserved friends who would love me and not my wallet. So I asked my mom to transfer me from a private school to a public one. No. She didn't like my idea, but you know who always supported me? My dear Grandpa Finn. He had few, uh, teeth, <laughs> but was always full of energy and positivity. I am a wise huh? wizard. I will turn those who hurt my <laughs> granddaughter into piglets. Although, those who hurt girls eventually become piglets without any of my help. <laughs> Grandpa helped me talk my mom into agreeing. Okay, Nikki, let me at least hire a bodyguard for you. No way! I'm an adult and I can take care of myself. Mom sighed, but agreed. Yay! A new chapter of my life oh. had begun. I was excited when I came to my new school. I wondered what adventures awaited me there. Would I find new friends and maybe true love? I was daydreaming and I bumped into a teacher in the hallway. I apologized and was about to move on, but he blocked my way. I'm Mr. Collins, huh? new art history teacher. Could you tell me where the principal's office is at? Huh, there was something fishy about that guy. He looked more like a boxer than an art connoisseur. I also found it suspicious hmm. that this was his first day at the school too. Then I took a closer look at him uh -huh. and I saw a ring on his finger. I recognized it. It was from last year's collection by my mom. Had she hired him to spy on me and paid him with a piece of jewelry? Ugh, I couldn't trust anyone. Since Mr. Collins worked for my mom, I decided I would make it hard for him to keep track of me. I ran away from the teacher down the hallway and slipped through the first door I saw. <sighs> Phew, that was close. I stepped back from the door and bumped into someone. <gasps> hey, what are you doing here? This is the men's locker room. I turned around and saw a gorgeous wow. guy. Oh, hello there, handsome. Have we met in my dreams? <laughs> Then more boys walked into the locker room and I felt awkward. Get out, we need to change. I'm new here and I got lost, chill. <sighs> what a jerk. I snorted and I went out into the hallway. The good news was that Mr. Collins was no longer there. The bad news was that my first class was art history. <laughs> By an amazing coincidence, I ended up in the same class as that guy from the locker room. His name was Billy. Judging from his clothes, he was on the soccer team. All the girls were drawn wow. to him like flies <laughs> to syrup. <laughs> and 
and I wasn't really surprised. After all, Billy was pretty cute. Then, Mr. Collins walked into the classroom. He used a projector to show us a painting by Salvador Dali. And then he said that the topic of the lesson would be the Baroque art movement. Um, what? What did that have to do with Salvador Dali? Our teacher didn't know anything about art. Now, I was sure that Mr. Collins had been hired by my mom. Heck. Well, I guess I wouldn't be taking my eyes off him either. I decided to have lunch outside and found a spot mm -hmm. on the school lawn. I had just taken out my sandwich when I heard a familiar voice. Nikki, I'm sorry. I was a moron. Please come back to me. It was my ex-boyfriend, Hugh. He had the audacity to come to my new school. Can you imagine? Mm -hmm. Get lost, Hugh. You're ruining my appetite. But he kept begging for forgiveness like an annoying insect buzzing around my ears. Then, broad-shouldered hmm. Billy suddenly appeared behind Hugh and glared at him. Are you deaf? She said she didn't want to talk to you. Hugh immediately huh? turned tail and ran away. And Billy sat down next to me with a smile. We had lunch and joked about the incident in the locker room. <laughs> I really liked him, and it seemed like the feeling was mutual. But... I had been wrong about people before, and now I was worried that Billy would find out that I was rich and only hang out with me because of that. When I got home, the first thing I did was confront my mom. I was pissed that she'd hired Mr. Collins in secret and thought I wouldn't figure out he was a bodyguard and not a teacher. I don't know what you're talking about, sweetie. Yeah, right. Mom turned out to be a pretty good actress and denied everything. <laughs> of course, I didn't believe her, but now I was even more worried. How was I supposed to act around Billy? I was thinking about it by a fountain when Grandpa found me. He sat down next to me and threw a fishing huh? rod into the fountain to cheer me up. I hope my catch will be good. <laughs> Why are you so glum, Angel? I told him about my feelings for Billy. Grandpa smiled slyly and said that we should test him. If he's interested in you, nothing will scare him away. I'll help you. It was a great idea. My grandpa was a genius. Oh, look. I got a big one. <laughs> um, perhaps he was a crazy genius. In the morning, he drove me to school in a wreck of a car. My classmates started to laugh and point their fingers at me. But wow. Billy was delighted. We can't really afford a good car. It's gorgeous. A real rarity. His reaction pleasantly surprised me. I wanted to know more about Billy, so I asked him if I could come to his soccer practice. Um, uh, sure. I came to the school stadium huh? and I saw Billy on the bench. It was kind of weird. Then, one of his teammates came up to me and said that the coach rarely let Billy out onto the field. Billy only looks like a good athlete. He's actually pretty clumsy and he can't run very fast. <sighs> so what? I didn't care about all that. I bought a soda uh -huh. and I sat down next mm -hmm. to Billy to cheer him up. Hello. Even on the bench, you still look great. <laughs> I heard a weird clicking noise behind us. And when I turned around, I saw Mr. Collins in the stands. Our eyes met, and Mom's spy quickly left the stadium. Ugh. I tried to hide how mad I was from Billy. Huh? After all, he <laughs> thought I was an ordinary girl from a poor family. He offered to walk me home after school. I panicked, and I called Grandpa. We couldn't let Billy see our mansion. Calm down. I've already thought of everything. He gave me an address huh? and told me to bring Billy there and pretend that was my home. So that's exactly what I did. On the way there, we chatted sweetly and laughed a lot. When we arrived, our eyes bugged <gasps> out. Grandpa had given me the address of a dilapidated <laughs> shack. Do you really live here? Uh, apparently, yeah. The door of the shack fell off and Grandpa walked out of it. He acted like a feeble old man and spouted nonsense. <sighs> Seems like Grandpa Finn was enjoying this a bit too much. Our life has been very hard, dear. Money's really tight. I nudged Grandpa so he wouldn't overdo it. Luckily, Billy didn't notice. He was looking at me like I was a superheroine. Wow, Nikki, your life is so hard, but you're so positive. I really admire you. <sighs> I wanted to knock him out with a bear hug. Billy more than proved to me that he didn't care about money. However, it really pissed me off that my mom was still lying to me. She kept insisting she didn't know anything about Mr. Collins. <sighs> like I would believe that. That fake teacher was acting weird and constantly stared at hmm. Billy and I. It was obvious he didn't know anything about art. If he was a teacher, then I was an astronaut. The next day, Billy came to school with a serious limp, and his beautiful face was red all over. I came up to him in the dining room, and I anxiously asked him what happened. I need to tell you something. I only look like an athlete. I'm actually really clumsy. And if I eat something wrong, I get breakouts. 
I'm not really handsome. He sighed <sighs> sadly and looked away. I decided to cheer Billy up and said that his beauty was coming from within. After all, everyone had breakouts and tripped sometimes. Billy immediately beamed. Hmm. Nikki, do you really think so? You're amazing. I told him to stay there and I left to buy some food. I was standing in line behind his coach and teammate. The things I heard made my heart sink. I don't understand what's going on with Billy. He's the best player on the team. Why do you ask me to bench him? He just wants to fool some girl. He even drew acne on his face and faked a limp today. What the heck? It was all fake. Billy owed me an explanation and I was going to get it. But then I saw Hugh come up to him and tell him something. Jeez, who let him in our school? I stormed up to them and scowled. Hugh swallowed, terrified, and immediately Aww. ran away. I turned to Billy and I ran my finger over his face. The makeup <gasps> smeared. He really had drawn on his acne. Is this lipstick? Yeah, it's my mom's. Why'd you lie to me? You're the best player on the team and your skin and leg are fine. How about you explain why you lied to me, huh? Hugh told me you're filthy rich. Hugh had apparently decided that if I didn't want to get back with him, then he wouldn't let me and Billy become an item either. Except it didn't matter anymore because I was done with being lied to. I decided I wouldn't forgive Billy for lying. We kept fighting until suddenly I heard uh -huh. a familiar clicking sound. I turned around and saw that Mr. Collins had taken a picture of Billy and I arguing. And then he left the dining room whistling. That was it! I was going to lose it! I decided to get proof that my mom had hired him to follow me around. Maybe then she would stop denying it. How dumb did they think I was? I shouted at Billy that I didn't want to talk to him anymore. And then at recess, I snuck into the classroom and started rummaging around through the desk drawers of our art history teacher. Well, well, well. What did we have here? Wow. <laughs> Would you look at that? I found a thick folder with photos of Billy and I. I saw pictures of us having lunch on the lawn and sitting at the stadium, and then photos of Billy going home and chatting with his friends. To my surprise, there were more pictures of Billy than there were of me. His training schedule and the names of his friends were all in the folder as well. Huh? Hmm? Maybe mom really hadn't hired Mr. Collins. Hmm? Then who was he and what did he want from us? <clears throat> what are you doing? <gasps> Damn it! I got so carried away that I hadn't noticed Billy come into the classroom. I was about to tell him about the photos I found when I heard footsteps in the hallway. I grabbed Billy by the arm and I dragged him into the closet. Mr. Collins walked into the classroom. He started to write something at his desk and we hid. How long are we gonna sit here? Until he leaves. Actually, I liked going on adventures like this with the guy I liked. I had been in the wrong when I lied to him, too. So I apologized and I whispered to him that I was afraid to trust people because of my friends who had betrayed me. I explained that I wanted to see if he would be interested in me, even if I was poor first. I'm sorry that they treated you like that, but I really like you. To be honest, I was testing you for the same reason. And then he told wow. me that he was tired of girls falling for his face and his muscles. He wanted to see if all I cared about was his looks. I almost burst out laughing. <laughs> we were perfect for each other. We silently smiled and held hands. By the way, your grandpa's pretty awesome. Yeah, he's always there for me. I've never even met my grandpa or my father. He sighed sadly and said that his dad had left his mom after Billy was born. It hadn't been easy for them. I know my dad is a scoundrel, but I still want to meet him. Poor Billy. He'd been through so much too. I sighed so loudly that Mr. Collins heard it. He opened the closet and swore. What are you doing in here? The nerve of him. I could play this game too. I put my hands on my hips and I glared at Mr. Collins. Who are you and why have you been following me and Billy around? You better answer. The man blinked, surprised. I've been gathering information about Billy, that's true. But all I know about you is that you're his classmate. Billy ran out of patience and demanded an explanation. Tell us the truth or I call the police. And I'll call my grandpa. <sighs> I wish the circumstances were better, but the thing is, Billy, I'm not a teacher. I'm your father. What? I felt like we were in a soap opera. <laughs> I was stunned and poor Billy fell over from shock. Mr. <gasps> Collins said that he had always felt guilty for abandoning his family. He wanted to get to know his son, but he didn't know where to start. I pretended to be a teacher to get closer to you. I wanted to find out what you're interested in and get to know you. I know I'm a terrible father, but please forgive me if you can. Wait, if my mom didn't hire you and you were watching Billy and not me, then where did you get the ring from my mom's collection? This one? I bought it on sale. It's so beautiful. <laughs> well, I couldn't argue with that. <laughs>
Billy shyly hugged his dad. They had a lot to discuss, but I had a feeling they would get along. We cleared everything up and I was over the moon. After all, my mom hadn't actually been lying to me. <laughs> my grandfather was always supportive and I even found new love in my school. Hi, I'm Donna. I had never been confident. There weren't many girls that looked like me in movies, magazines, or commercials. I was particularly insecure about, um, my huge rear. <laughs> Getting into my favorite oh. jeans wasn't easy. Oh. Ugh. My mom was a real beauty, which did not help my confidence. She was the prom queen when she was my age. By the way, do you want to know a secret? Sometimes when no one was watching, I tried on my mother's crown and dreamed that I was Miss Spring. Oh, are all these flowers for me? That is so sweet of you. Donna, what are you doing? Just dusting off your crown, your majesty. <laughs> oh, baby, that was so long ago. I'm a respected doctor now. You could try and become the prom queen this year, though. You're charming and talented enough to succeed. Oh, hmm. <laughs> she must have been joking. I really was talented. I was Whoa. great at dancing and skating, but I was very insecure about my looks. So I only did it when no one could see me. My school life sometimes resembled an obstacle course. For example, I was worried that everyone uh -huh. would gossip about my figure. So I often changed for gym class in the toilet. One day, I was struggling to button my jeans. Oh, come on. And then Rose walked into the toilet. Her name suited her. She was beautiful and arrogant, just like the flower. She even had thorns. I held my breath and I hoped she wouldn't notice me. But at that moment, the treacherous button suddenly came off and oh. boop, hit Rose's <gasps> nose. Oh no, she wouldn't leave me alone after that. Hey, chubby cheeks, uh -huh. did you get stuck in any doorways lately? Ha <sighs> ha, hilarious. My classmate didn't have a great sense of humor, but I didn't have the courage to put her in her place. I was too shy and I didn't have any friends. So I always sat alone in the dining room. And that gorgeous guy is Patrick Johnson, the best student at our school. He was really freaking good at chemistry. I often stalked him online, and I knew we had a lot in common. We both loved cats and fantasy novels. Uh, however, I lacked the courage to come up and talk to him. <laughs> I thought I wasn't good enough for him. Of course, I dreamed of changing. One day, I dozed off in the classroom and had a dream that I was slim and beautiful. Everyone adored me, and Patrick treated me like a queen. Well... I woke up because our teacher was banging on my desk and my classmates were dying laughing. Donna drools in her sleep. <laughs> she must have dreamed of pancakes. <laughs> oh, I wanted to sink through the floor. Later, we were told there was going to be a spring dance soon. All the girls immediately started to discuss who would become queen. What a silly question. Of course it's gonna be me. I desperately wanted to get that crown, just like my mom, but I knew I didn't stand a chance, so I didn't put my name on the list of candidates and I went home. I had to walk by an extreme park. I'd always watch the skaters there do cool tricks with envy. I knew how to do some cool flips too. However, I never joined them because I was worried that everyone would start laughing at me. Like, haha, you're gonna break the skateboard in two. I'd much rather keep practicing alone in my backyard. That night, I had the worst nightmares of my life. I was standing on stage when my jeans burst. My classmates started laughing at me like hyenas. I woke up in a cold sweat and I realized something had to change. I couldn't keep moping because of my appearance. I was going to become the queen. From that day on, I did my all to lose weight. I ate only vegetables for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. My mother noticed it and tried talking to me. Donna, be careful with those diets. Beauty is not a number on the scale. It's easy for you to say, you're slim. Mom hmm. thought about something for a while and then suggested that I go to a dance studio. Sports could help me lose weight and it would be good for my health after all, but I resolutely refused. Dancing in front of a bunch of people that could make fun of me? Hell no, not for the world. I kept eating like a bird for a couple of more days, but the lack of results was infuriating. I was anxious and I kept losing my temper. I would have probably given up, but then mom handed me some pills. I see how hard you're trying and I want to help. This was developed in our hospital. They'll help you change overnight. Yeah, uh -huh. right. I told her I was too old to believe in fairy tales. However, I decided to give it a try anyway. 
because I didn't want to hurt her feelings. I took one pill before going to bed. It wasn't like things could get any worse. After that, I fell fast asleep and had weird, vivid dreams. The next morning, my life changed. <gasps> I walked into the bathroom and I almost screamed when I saw a slender stranger in the mirror. Ah, who are you? Wait, is that me? I thought I was still dreaming, so I pinched myself. Ow, it hurt. It meant it was all real. My mother's magic remedy wow. really did help me change overnight. I hugged my mom tight and I thanked her for her help. And then I skipped off to school. Everyone would be stunned when they saw how much prettier I was. I walked down the hallway feeling like a model and playfully winked at all the guys. My classmates looked after me, surprised. I became beautiful and was finally able to do what I'd always dreamed of. The first thing I did was put my name on the list of contenders for the prom queen crown. Then, I sat down with a group of popular kids at lunch. Before, I wouldn't have dared to even look in their direction. But now, we were having fun chatting and discussing our favorite TV shows. Tana, you're so cool. I wish we'd hung out more. The transformation gave me confidence. I even dared to talk to Patrick. Hi, you probably don't even remember me. Why wouldn't I remember you? You're Donna. We have chemistry together. Oh, he must have recognized uh -huh. me by my bright hair. After all, it was the only thing left of the old me. Patrick and I chatted all through the recess and even agreed to go to a cat show that weekend. Why hadn't mom given me that remedy before? I made friends with everyone in school in just one day thanks to my new luck. After school, I went home, feeling like I was walking on air. It was the best day of my life and nothing could ruin my mood. But then, I saw a stranger by our house. Huh. His face seemed vaguely familiar to me. Huh? I tried to remember where I could have seen him, but hmm. for some reason, that just made me dizzy. Sir, have we met before? No, Donna. This is the first time I'm seeing you. What? Then how do you know my name? Um, I said dollar, not Donna. Look, there's a dollar lying right there. Huh? No, there isn't. I looked away for just a second, but that was enough time for the man to sneak away. Huh, what was up with him? But soon, I forgot all about him. I told my mom about my amazing day and I thanked her for her help again. I'm glad that things are finally working out for you. By the way, what are those pills called? There was nothing written on them. Um, those pills are experimental and not on sale yet. So they don't have a name. Don't worry about that though. Let's just have dinner. Later, something weird happened. That evening, I was looking at my reflection and realized something. Hold on, why do my old clothes fit me? I've lost so much weight, they should be hanging off me. I decided that mom had probably just bought some new clothes for me. I wanted to ask her about it, but she was already asleep. Starting from the next day, I started preparing for the spring dance. I looked gorgeous in my dress now. Wow. Still, I wanted to learn a couple of new moves, so I headed to a dance studio. During the first lesson, I showed everything I was capable of, and I was praised by the teacher and the other girls. That was amazing, especially for a beginner. Have you taken dancing classes before? I only ever danced in my room, with the lights off and the curtains closed. <laughs> You see, I used to look different and I was very self-conscious. Well, I'm so glad you decided to join us. You could become a real star. My dancing skills improved by the day. I got new friends and hobbies. My life just kept getting better and better. Rose still picked on me sometimes, but her snide remarks didn't bother me anymore. Donna, do you really think you could become the prom queen? Aren't you afraid the stage will break under you? <laughs> I rolled my eyes. Was she hinting at my weight? I was thin now. She really needed to switch it up. I finally had the courage to put that upstart in her place. Bros, do you really need to insult me to feel uh -huh. better about yourself? It's pathetic. Hey, guys, clap if you think Miss Thorne is acting dumb. All our classmates burst into applause. Patrick said he admired my bravery. Rose realized she had lost uh -huh. that round and scowled. You'll pay for this. Whatever. I wasn't afraid of anything now. After all, I finally had cool friends and hobbies. Patrick and I became an item. Being confident was awesome. Things were going great until I ran into that weird guy again. I was coming home from school when I saw him coming out of our house. Just <gasps> looking at him made me dizzy again. I called out to him, but he pretended not to hear me and quickly <laughs> ran away. What was going on? I immediately asked my mom about him. 
What are you talking about, sweetie? I had no guests today. Something wasn't adding up. Either I was hallucinating or mom was hiding something from me. I decided to talk to her about my magic vitamins the next day. What if they were having some weird side effects? But mom hmm. left for work before I woke up, so I brought the pills with me to school and I asked Patrick for help after classes. You're good at chemistry, right? Can you find out what these are made of? I don't know, Donna. That's gonna take a long time. Please, it's very important. Well, <laughs> anything for my princess. I hugged him gratefully. He was the best boyfriend ever. He had been planning to go to a pizzeria after classes, but since Patrick was gonna be busy in the lab now, I took my skateboard and I went to the extreme park. Hi, mind if I join you? I showed them a couple tricks and they whistled approvingly. I easily fit into their company and was over the moon that I'd fulfilled yet another one of my dreams. I loved my new life, Wow! but I was also worried I would gain weight and become my old self again. The insecure and shy Donna. I even had a nightmare about it that night. In it, I went onto the stage to get my crown and bam, turned <gasps> plump in front of everyone again. Ugh, I almost fell out of my bed from horror. In the morning, I convinced myself that I was just nervous about the upcoming dance and I went to school. Things were going great, as usual, but then something terrible happened in gym class. Rose kept <laughs> glaring at me, and I knew she was up to no good. When it was my turn to take the running test, I did a few laps around the gym, sweating so much that all my clothes ended up soaked through. Oof. After the test, I sat down on a bench and fell because someone had sabotaged it. I knew who was to blame. Ugh, she was gonna get it. Rose, you've gone too far this time. Oh, please. You're so heavy. Sooner or later, it would have happened anyway. What are you talking about? I'm slim now. Really? Look over there, then. What? Uh -huh. I looked at the place where I had fallen, and I couldn't believe my eyes. There was a huge wet spot on the floor. Hmm. But how was that possible? I anxiously got on the scales, and it couldn't be real. My weight hadn't changed at all. It wasn't right. I ran out into the hallway and I bumped into Patrick. Oh, I was just looking for you. I found out there's nothing special about your pills. They're ordinary breath mints. What? How had they helped me then? I looked in the mirror and saw the truth. My body looked the same as it used to. I felt dizzy. It was like I was stuck in a nightmare. I rushed home and demanded an explanation from my mother. Donna, sit down and I'll tell you everything. There was no magic remedy. I just wanted you to believe in yourself, so I asked my colleague, Dr. Ross, for help. He's a hypnologist, and he convinced you that you had changed, and now you looked the way you'd always wanted. Now, it was clear who that strange man was. He must have come over to find out how I was doing. I forgot Dr. Ross's huh? face after the hypnosis session. But as soon as I saw him again, my memory hmm. started to come back and I got dizzy. I couldn't believe my mom had deceived me like that. I started crying like a baby. Sweetie, it did you good though. You finally did everything you'd been dreaming about. Found friends and got the boy you've always liked to fall for you. Can't you see that it's not your looks that matter, but your confidence? Confidence. Her words made me feel even worse. I remembered that I had gone skateboarding, danced in front of everyone, and flirted with Patrick looking like that. It was humiliating. I must have looked ridiculous. I ran to my room in tears and decided I would never leave it again. Mom knocked on my door, but I didn't want to talk to her. A couple of days passed that way. I just lay in bed and stared at the ceiling. However, people hmm. kept calling and texting me. Where have you been? I miss my princess. Then, I got a bunch of texts from my classmates asking if I was okay. After uh -huh. that, my dancing teacher called. Donna, you've become a real star for our group. Why did you stop coming to classes? And then my skater friends started asking why I didn't hang out with them anymore. Could it be that my mom was right? Hmm. My friends liked me because of who I was, and my appearance had nothing to do with it. I thought for a long time, but eventually forgave my mother. Everything that happened really had done me good. A few days after that, I went back to school. Everyone was so happy to see me that I felt on top of the world. At the spring dance, my classmates voted for me because I had always been kind and friendly to everyone. Rose was crying in the corner because that was the first time she had lost. If the crown is so important to you, take it. What? But you won it! I don't need a throne to be a queen. What matters is I have loyal friends. So it's yours now. Rose still looked confused, but started taking selfies with the crown. Meanwhile, I was having fun with my friends. 
Patrick pulled me into a spin and kissed me for the first time. My family had several unusual traditions. For example, every year, Mom repainted the house in a new shade of pink. We also decorated a palm tree for Christmas. But that wasn't the weirdest thing about our family. All of the women in it kept long hair. That's why I never cut mine until I was 15. It's crazy, right? Hi, I'm Alice, and this is the Private Diary channel. Hit that like button and let's get to it. My parents were quite wealthy. When I was a kid, they bought me dozens of expensive dolls and fashionable dresses. Huh? However, I was more interested in cool huh. action movies in which brave mm. cops caught the bad guys. I wanted mm. to be just like them. Mr. Dinosaur, you are under arrest and have the right to remain silent. I'm the law here. It horrified my mom. <gasps> After all, she was very <sighs> feminine. I suspected that huh? she didn't take off heels even in the shower. Hmm. I'd also never seen her without makeup. Alice, what are you doing? Playing a cop? I want to be a sheriff. Don't even think about it, honey. That's not an appropriate career for a woman. She was convinced that as a girl, I had to look good to find a rich husband and never work. She basically wanted me to be her copy. That's why she taught me ways to look good ever since I was a kid. I didn't like it, but I didn't have much choice because mom was bossy and always made dad take her side. I want to eat this yogurt, not make a hair mask out of it. Don't be silly. You need to look pretty if you want boys to like you. Your dad fell in love with me because of my gorgeous hair. Isn't that right, dear? Well, looks aren't the only thing that matters. What was that? Um, I meant to say, listen to your mother, Alice. See what I mean? Dad never stood up to her. I dressed like Barbie and acted like a lady when they could see me. However, I secretly kept watching action movies and dreaming of being a cop. Tremble in fears, scoundrels. There's a new sheriff in town. What are you doing? Um, putting on makeup. That's my girl. It got worse as I grew older. The long hair made my life difficult. It looked amazing, of wow. course, and everyone admired it. I would give anything to have such gorgeous hair. You have no idea how hard it is to take care of this mane, though. I wasn't exaggerating. I had to get up a couple of hours earlier than I would have otherwise to wash, dry, and style my unruly hair. Sometimes it got so tangled, I had to ask the maids to help me comb it. Raise your hands if you ever got caught in the rain. The humid air was my biggest enemy because it made my hair look like a bird's nest. I wanted to cut it. However, I couldn't do that because of my mom. My parents hardly ever let me go anywhere alone. But sometimes, I would sneak out and explore other neighborhoods to cheer up. One day, I got on the first bus I saw and drove to a beautiful park. I got off the bus and felt my heart skip a beat. There was a gorgeous guy running around the park. I couldn't take my eyes off him. It was like the stranger moved in slow motion and the sweat stains on his clothes shimmered beautifully in the sun. Um, I'm not good at romantic stuff. What I mean is, I wanted to swoon. But then, something terrible happened. The bus doors closed and I realized with horror that my hair got stuck between them. The driver was about to hit the gas. I started to scream and wave my arms in a panic. Wait, wait! That gorgeous stranger ran up to the bus, knocked on the driver's window and asked him to open the doors. Phew! I was saved! Thank you! I was afraid my dumb hair would go to the next stop without me! <laughs> I'm Alice. And I'm Teddy. Your hair isn't dumb. It's beautiful. Then, he said he was thirsty and offered to buy me a soda. Mom says sweet drinks are bad for the figure. Uh, does that mean no? It means I'd gladly drink a whole fountain of soda. <laughs> We walked and chatted for a long time. Teddy said that he was training in the park every day because he wanted to get into a police academy and follow in his parents' footsteps. Wow, I wanted to become a cop when I was a kid, but mom thinks that's not an appropriate job for a girl. She even forbids me from cutting my hair because of our stupid family traditions. We hung out some more and then Teddy walked me home. At parting, he said I should talk to my parents and convince them to give me more freedom. I knew it was useless, but decided to try anyway. That evening, I came up to my mom and told her how much my long hair was bothering me. The world won't end if I get a new haircut. You will look like a boy if you cut it. Forget about it and go to your room. Ugh, it was like talking to a wall. I wasn't surprised that was all she had to say on the matter. Teddy and I kept texting each other. Sometimes I even managed to sneak away and go for a walk with my new friend. One morning, I woke up with a terrible <sighs> migraine. At first, I thought it would go away soon. Unfortunately, the next day, the pain became unbearable. I told my parents about it, and my mom immediately brought me to a hospital. They examined me and ran some tests, but couldn't figure out what was wrong with me. 
Still, I wasn't getting better. We kept going to different doctors. However, none of them managed to diagnose me. I couldn't bear the pain any longer. Mom found the best doctor in town and brought me to her. I see. Alice, wait in the hallway while I talk to your mom. I shrugged and left. Was I finally going to get help? A minute later, I heard my mom yelling furiously at Dr. Miller. What? You're a charlatan. I've never ever heard anything so stupid in my life. With those words, she stormed out of the office like an angry bull and told me we were leaving. Oh wait, what did she say to you? Nothing. Forget it. We'll go to another clinic. I won't rest until you get a normal diagnosis. Hmm. She was obviously hiding something. But to be honest, I was getting sick of all the hospitals, so I asked for a break. Luckily, the painkillers helped a little. Huh? That evening, Teddy asked me how I was feeling. Let's go cycling. I'm sure the fresh air will do you good. What a great idea. We agreed to meet in the park, and the next day, I sneaked out and headed there. I was riding my bike and looking forward to hanging out with Teddy. My hair was flying in the breeze. Then, my phone vibrated in my pocket. Without stopping, I took it out and read the text from Teddy. Sorry, Alice. Mom had to leave for a work emergency. I need to look after my little brother, so I won't be able to come. Damn it, what a shame. But that wasn't the worst thing that happened to me that day. I was distracted by the phone and didn't see my brake get loose. It got tangled in the bicycle chain and I fell over. Ah! Ouch, what a grand fiasco. I tried to pull my hair out to no avail. There was no one around to help me. My migraine was getting worse again. Tears stung my eyes. I was so sick of it all. It was time for desperate measures. I had a travel bag with some tools with me. I pulled a pair of scissors out of it and mercilessly cut off my hair. It was only after a few minutes that I realized what I had done. Mom will have a heart attack when she sees me. Well, there was no way back. I came home and told my parents about what had happened. I almost went deaf while mom shouted at me. She said I was a disgrace to our family, the first girl to break our tradition, and that no one would love me now. She kept going, and it seemed she would never run out of steam. You will stay in your room until your hair grows back. I forbid you from going anywhere but school. Is that clear? Why are you so obsessed with my hair? Dad, come on, this is ridiculous. Mom glared at my dad, and he mumbled that I shouldn't argue. I was about to go bonkers. I thought I would be stuck at home, feeling sick. But guess what? The next day, I felt much better. Woohoo! Great, even. Living with short hair was so much easier. My head felt light like a balloon. I didn't even care that mom was glaring at me like I was a traitor. And by the way, she was wrong when she said no one would like me if I had short hair. I sent a selfie to Teddy and he loved my new look. I didn't think you could get any more beautiful. One day, I stopped by an ice cream shop on the way home from school. While I was standing in line, someone stepped on my foot. Oh, excuse me. Oh, you're Alice. I'm Dr. Miller, remember? Right, how's it going, Doc? She looked at me in amazement and then asked me if my strict mother had let me cut my hair after all. Now, hold on a minute. What? Didn't she tell you? It turned out that Dr. Miller had realized that my migraines were caused by my heavy hair. She told mom I should cut it. Instead of thanking her, mom lost her temper and called the doctor a charlatan. So that's what it was all about. That pissed me off. I couldn't just let that slide. So I came home and confronted my mom. You knew I was in pain, but you let me suffer because your traditions were more important to you than my health. You're too young to understand how important this is for your future. We spent a long time shouting at each other. Each of us hoped dad would take our side, but he tiptoed out of the room so we wouldn't drag him into our fight. I'm invisible. I'm invisible. That's when I realized that I didn't have to always listen to my mom. I decided to follow my dreams instead, so I ran to my room and called Teddy. I need a favor. Name it. I'll do my best. I told him about the way mom treated me and that I wanted to follow my dreams. And then I asked him to train me a little so that I could get into the police academy too. My friend happily agreed. After that, I threw all my old clothes out of the wardrobe. Goodbye and comfortable heels. Long live cozy sneakers. Mom was shocked by my new look. She said I looked like a boy. I finally felt comfortable in my own skin though. Teddy and I met every day after school. We trained together and my friend showed me all sorts of self-defense techniques his parents had taught him. It helped us grow even closer. Since I was on a roll, I took a risk and asked him out. I've been meaning to tell you I like you for a while now. Things were going so well, but one day mom said that I was completely out of control and she knew how to fix it. You left me no choice, Alice. I'm sending you to a girls boarding school. You're finally going to learn how to be a real lady. Now get in the car, our plane is taking off soon. It was nuts. She didn't even let me say goodbye to my friends. I only had the time to text Teddy that I was going to the airport. Mom immediately snatched the phone out of my hands. 
Gadgets are forbidden in your new school. It made my blood boil. I couldn't believe mom was doing it to me. Soon, we arrived at the airport. Mom left to talk to the staff at the check-in counter. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, I tried to figure out what to do. And then, I saw a guy creep up to my mom and snatch her purse before running away. He stole my purse! Stop him! I didn't hesitate before chasing after him. I felt like an action movie heroine. It was such an adrenaline rush. Stop! In the name of the law! My catchphrase was still a work in progress. Soon, I caught up to that scoundrel. We were in some sort of dead end, and I realized how high the stakes were. So, I used a move Teddy had taught me. Needless to say, the thief was stronger than me. I thought that I wouldn't be able to return my mom's purse after all when a gorgeous policewoman came to my rescue. She easily and gracefully handcuffed the bastard. Today is clearly not your day, buddy, because I am on duty. What a cool catchphrase. What? I mean, uh, thank you for your help, ma'am. At that moment, my terrified mom finally caught up to us, took back her purse, and hugged me. Sweetie, don't you dare take such risks anymore. Now come on, we're late for boarding. Then, someone shouted my name. It was Teddy. It turned out that he had got my message and driven to the airport as fast as he could to say goodbye. <sighs> oh, I was almost too late. Mom, what are you doing here? I was drinking coffee when I saw this brave girl deal with that scumbag. Wow, it turned out that officer was Teddy's mother. It was clear he admired her. My friend hugged me. This brave girl is my girlfriend, Alice. She's going to be a cop too. I turned red as a tomato and my mother's eyes bugged out. She uh -huh. pulled me away from Teddy and dragged me away. Unbelievable, I told you to forget about that stupid dream. You can't be a cop, you are a girl. Sorry, ma'am, but you are quite wrong. Strong women can do anything they set their minds to. Your daughter is fearless and determined. It seems what she really needs is your support. She's right, mom. Women can be more than just beautiful. They make excellent doctors, politicians, and rescuers. Let me choose my own path. For the first time, I saw my mom hesitate. Had I finally got through to her? She thought for a long time, but eventually gave in. <sighs> You're right, Alice. I probably shouldn't impose my beliefs on you. We're not going anywhere. I squealed with joy and Whoa. hugged her. Teddy's mom led the criminal to her car, but before that, she had some parting words for me. Alice, you were very brave today, but you shouldn't do that again. Don't put yourself in danger until you learn how to deal with the criminals. I promise, ma'am. As you see, things took a wild turn. I'm still dating Teddy, and we are getting ready for the police academy. Has my mom changed? Nope. She still often grumbles that I look like a guy. But what matters is, she no longer stands in the way of my dreams. That's enough for me. Hi, I'm Bridget. I have an older sister called Angelina. These days, we are thick as thieves. But it wasn't always like that. We used to fight all the time when we were kids. I couldn't stand Angelina and never missed an opportunity to mess with her. For example, I often spilled water on my sister's bed while she was asleep and laughed at her. Mom, Dad, you should buy Angelina diapers. She wet the bed again. <laughs> but one day, my sister woke up in the middle of the night and saw me. Wow, I'd never seen her so mad. You're going to get it. You'd have to catch me first. <laughs> I am so ashamed of the way I used to act. It was all because of our parents. They'd always loved my sister more than me. For as long as I could remember, they told me about all her successes and said I should be more like her. I felt invisible. That's why I bullied her. This went on until we got older. One day, mom and dad left to visit our grandma in a nursing home. Angelina and I were left alone and got into a fight again. We made quite a mess, but eventually we came to our senses and started to clean up the house. While we were doing that, we made up and realized we should support each other instead of competing. <laughs> When our parents came back, Angelina scolded them for the way they treated me. You're right, girls. It was our fault you didn't get along. Things are going to change from now on. And they did. For a while, at least. Angelina became my best friend. Mom and Dad stopped playing favorites. I no longer felt like I was in my sister's shadow and was enjoying life. I even got a boyfriend. His name was Stan. We became an item after he confessed that he liked me for a long time. You used to look like a prickly cactus, and I was afraid to talk to you. But now, I see how cute you are. If this is your way of asking me out, then yes. Things were looking up. However, as you might have guessed, that wasn't the end of my story. It had only just begun. One day, my mother got a call from my grandma's mm -hmm. nursing home and turned white as a sheet. It turned out grandma had broken her leg while having fun on a cruise liner. She had apparently decided to show young people how to dance limbo, but fell and injured her leg. But what upset mom the most was the fact that grandma would need to move in with us while she recovered. 
It's going to be a disaster. Come on, Mom. It's going to be fine. Right. Grandma is always so nice when we visit her. Mom seemed to think about our words、mm -hmm. and then smiled slightly. <laughs> In that case, you two will be looking after that wrinkled angel. Your dad and I have a lot of work to do. My sister and I exchanged confused、mm -hmm. glances, but agreed. What was the worst that could happen? Oh, how naive we were! Grandma Grace started to boss us around and complain as soon as she walked in. This isn't a house, but a huge dump. Angelina, take me to the TV and massage my neck. Bridget, clean my false teeth. Ew. Well, have fun, girls. I'm off to work. Mom left us with Grandma, and we didn't have a moment of peace. Our grandma was acting worse than a baby. Angelina and I bent over backwards to please her, but she was unhappy with everything, no matter how hard we tried. The soup is cold. Do you want me to get sick? Now it's hot as lava. I could burn my tongue. Granny wouldn't even let us rest at night. She slept in our room and snored like a freight train. She also had hearing problems, so during the day she turned up the TV so loudly you could hear it across the street. My sister and I couldn't sleep or study. Of course, our academic performances suffered because of that. But do you know what hurt the most? Mom said nothing about Angelina's bad grades, while I always got an earful. Bridget, you won't get into a good college with grades like these. Yeah, my happiness didn't last long. We were back to square one. Mom was acting like the world revolved around Angelina, and I was the worst daughter in the world. I even started to wonder if she was right. I tried harder to make my parents proud of me. I helped around the house, mowed the lawn, and took care of Grandma. Still, Mom didn't seem to notice my efforts, and always found something to criticize. Bridget, look at those bags under your eyes. Your sister always looks flawless. Ask her for a couple of tips.、Uh, of course, I looked like a crumpled T-shirt. I couldn't remember the last time I got a full night's sleep. One day, I was passing by my parents' bedroom and heard them arguing. How can you be so heartless? Why do you treat your mother so badly? Because she's unbearable. She has always been too strict with me. Don't you dare raise your voice at me. Wow, they had never fought like that before. My stomach was in knots. I wanted to talk to Angelina, so I went back to our room, but she wasn't there. Your sister just left. What? Without telling me? I called Angelina and demanded an explanation. Sorry, Bridget. I met some cool guys, and they invited me to a party. Please don't tell Mom and Dad. I didn't want to fight with my sister because we'd only just learned to get along, so I agreed. I decided to do my homework, but Grandma used her crutch to kick my textbooks away. Why would you do that? Shh! I'm going to tell you stories from my youth, back in my days. Oh no! I felt like I was stuck in a living nightmare. The next day at school, I decided to tell Stan about my problems. He always knew how to cheer me up. Baby, you just need to relax a little. Let's go out this weekend, just you and me, on one condition. What is it, baby? Don't ever call me baby again. A bit later, I found out great news. Our principal said that our school was going to take part in an exchange program. The student to create the coolest project based on their favorite book would study for a whole year at a very expensive and prestigious school in Germany. My classmates immediately signed up for the competition. I decided to join them. I wanted to win and prove to mom that I was just as capable as Angelina. I chose a Harry Potter book and got to work that very evening, or at least tried to. Grandma kept distracting me. She didn't take no for an answer and started to sob if I didn't pay attention to her. I'm bored. Let's dance. Granny, you're in a wheelchair. Your leg is broken. Nobody in this house cares for me. <laughs> oh, poor me. Oh, I sighed heavily, turned on the music, and started to move Grandma around the room. She was having fun, but I was so tired I could barely move. What pissed me off the most was that Angelina hung out with her new friends all the time lately and didn't help me at all. Her friends were some sort of rockers, and because of them, my sister now had strange hobbies. She bought a guitar, completely changed her look, and started listening to dark music. She even painted her part of the room black. I didn't really like it and told her that. Angelina, you dreamed of doing gymnastics and charity work, but now you look like you came out of a horror movie. Whoa, baby! I'm just trying to find myself. There's nothing wrong with that. I realize that music is my vocation. Maybe she was right. I shouldn't have judged her for her hobby. But for God's sake, why was everyone calling me baby? It made my blood boil. As you might have guessed, I didn't have the time to work on my project that evening. The next day, Stan and I agreed to go on a date. Angelina left early in the morning for a rehearsal, so I decided to ask Mom if she could look after Grandma for a couple of hours. However, my parents were fighting again. I can't put up with your temper any longer. You're not the woman I married anymore. Dad shouted that he needed time to think, packed up, and left. Mom locked herself in their room and said she wasn't in the mood to talk to anyone. 
My family was falling apart, and I felt miserable. I wanted to hang out with Stan and get my mind off things, so I asked Grandma to behave while I was away. Soon, I met up with my boyfriend. I thought we'd have a nice picnic or go to the movies, but he brought me to a noisy party. Didn't you say it would be just the two of us? Yeah, I forgot that I'd already promised my friends we'd hang out. I can't cancel my plans because of you, can I? Come on, it'll be fun. His words made me feel even worse, but I tried not to get hung up on them. I wanted to dance and relax, but my mom called me and demanded that I come home. Granny had apparently decided to take a bath and wanted me to wash her back. Uh, was she for real? Damn it! <sighs> I sighed warily and said I'd be there soon. Then, I found Stan and asked him to come with me, but he was talking to some girls and refused to help me. Bridget, do you think I'm nuts? I'm not gonna waste the weekend looking after a cranky old lady. Tears stung my eyes. I felt humiliated, but didn't let it show and left the party with my head held high. When I came home, I saw something weird. My mother was bringing my sister sweets and patting her on the head. What's going on? Are you blind? Can't you see that Angelina is sick? It turned out mom thought my sister was dressing like a goth because she was depressed. She refused to believe that it was just part of her new rock star image. Bridget, give your grandma a foot massage. I'm taking Angelina shopping. Maybe it will cheer up my dear girl. <gasps> Can you imagine? No one cared that I was on the verge of a nervous breakdown. Barely holding back my rage, I stopped my sister. Can we talk? Why does mom think you're depressed? I'm not exactly thrilled myself, but mom will go ballistic if she finds out I quit gymnastics and took up music. They left, and I was left alone with my problems. After I finally put grandma to bed, I sat down to work on my Harry Potter project, but I was so tired, I passed out right at the table. Things were getting worse by the day. Mom dragged my sister to spas and psychologists and did everything to cheer her up. Meanwhile, I was all but invisible. I did everything Grandma asked of me and tried to work on my project whenever I had a free moment. I really wanted someone to say they were proud of me, but everyone forgot about me. Dad said he still needed time to think, and all my boyfriend cared about was having fun. Stan, I'm running out of time. Could you help me with the project? That's so boring. Let's go to the water park instead. You know I can't leave Grandma alone for long. Then I'll see you after you've solved your problems. Oh, I was so lonely. And one day, my sister suddenly called me and said that she had run away from home and was going to live in her friend's trailer for a while. Mom has been smothering me. I told her I'm going to go to a music college, but she didn't even listen to me. She kept saying I needed treatment. She gave me an address and asked me to bring her some clothes. Please don't tell mom where to find me. I wasn't thrilled, but agreed to help my sister. I put her clothes in a backpack and headed to that address. What I didn't know was that mom followed me. When she saw Angelina, she grabbed her by the arm and dragged her to the car. The worst thing was that my sister thought I'd ratted her out. You traitor! I trusted you! Angelina came home, but she no longer spoke to me. My eyes started twitching from stress. The only thing that calmed me down was working on my project late at night. Soon, it was finally ready. I proudly carried it to my school. However, once I got there, I got a call from my mom. As soon as I answered, she started yelling at me. It turned out that Grandma had fallen and hurt herself again. She was supposed to have her cast removed and move back to the nursing home tomorrow, but now she will be staying with us for a long time, and it's all your fault. I burst into tears. At that moment, Stan was passing by. Instead of trying to comfort me, he laughed. I couldn't stand it and shouted that we were over. I don't need a boyfriend I can't rely on. He got so mad, he snatched the model out of my hands and threw it on the floor. Oh yeah? Well, you can say goodbye to studying in Germany now. Oh no! I tried so hard, and it was all for nothing. What did I do to deserve it? I ran home in tears. However, no one there cheered me up either. I finally snapped and started to scream and destroy everything around me. Granny, you're acting like a spoiled child. Oh, and Angelina, it must be hard to be so loved by mom. You can't even imagine what it's like when your own parents don't notice you. Mom, you are the actual worst. I did everything to make you proud of me, but you don't care about me at all. I got dizzy and fainted. I woke up in my bed. My worried family was gathered around me, even dad. I thought they would scold me again, but to my surprise, they hugged me. Oh, sis, I was so scared. I'm sorry for the way we treated you. Mom was worrying over me when it was you that needed help. Then, Grandma apologized for her behavior and admitted that she had been acting that way so that we would pay attention to her. She even fell again on purpose to stay with us longer. And then, she turned to my mom. I saw the way you treat your daughters. 
if you don't change, you will end up like me. Everyone will forget about you and send you to a nursing home. Then, she told us she got insurance money after the accident on the liner. Bridget, you've been through a lot because of me. I want you to use that money to study in Germany, just like you wanted. Mom scoffed that she would never end up alone. However, she was in for some unfortunate news. Dad said that he had thought about everything and decided to divorce her. Angelina told her that she had been accepted into a music college and would be leaving soon. Mom burst into tears and hugged me. At least I've got you. I will be a good mom from now on. However, I told her I had been trying to please her for long enough already. Now, I want to think about myself and my future. So, I used my grandmother's help and went to Germany. I keep in touch with everyone in my family, except mom. 